And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. You go first. You go first. I'll go first. You go first. It's The Bonfire, everybody. We are live on a Wednesday. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Big J Okerson. I'm Dan Soder. That's Dan Soder. Dan Soder, used people, webisodes. Available on ComedyCentral.com. CISO.com. Go watch Big J's What's Your Fucking Deal. All crowd work show. Awesome lineup. CISO.com. What's your fucking deal? New what? episode coming out. Tonight, tonight at midnight. Tonight at midnight. That's right. Every Thursday, a new episode. When does mine come out? Mm-hmm. I got to go to CISO.com and you watch. You got to order. And they also haven't given me a free one, so I also had to pay for it. Everyone's got to pay for it. That's that thing where you start getting pissed and talking through your teeth. Right? Yeah, uh, it's just uh, maybe, great. maybe they're struggling. <laughs> because great. what a great opportunity! It's such a great opportunity. It's been pretty aggressive, but it's a <sighs> the uh, support's been overwhelming. Just really wish I could get some kickback. We have a packed house. The crew is here. I Jacob mean, what Blue. A- what a good Mark show today. Face. What a good show today. Two special guests in the studio. Christine's um, hanging out, and we have, uh, and everyone's heard about him on this show for sure. But coming to uh, audit the show. Is that the right word for it? To audit it, maybe? Um, well, of course, we have Fenoya. Fenoya's floating. Hanging around. Uh, he brought me water. He gave me a... Like Gunga Din. He gave me a Down Syndrome-like hug. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was an awkward that... side hug. Yeah. And... uh Felt good. And sitting here is uh, Carla and Isabella. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's we heard. We are talking full Okerson clan today. When we uh, went to go check them in downstairs, yeah. it was hilarious. They... They they had Carla's name, and they go uh, and I go Isabel and, and the lady goes you're Elizabeth like it was the computer's Elizabeth which Elizabeth. I thought was hilarious Co- yeah <laughs> because that's the name that my dad my dad her grandfather yeah the first time he met her that's what he called her was it a, was there a bend down involved I imagine him putting his hands on his knees being so, like, yeah sort of was there do you remember that Isabella. Uh, he, he sort of did. He definitely gave like a little, like, oh, hey, you must be little Elizabeth. Is. The hands to the knees, like, is that little Elizabeth? Dude, I'm right, Carla? Boom! Yeah. That's, a, that's a definite hands on your knees fuck up. Dude, the night before my special taping, did we talk about this? My dad came out. He was <laughs> yeah. just firing heat, man. And, and, and Carla and Isabella were just laying it on him hard. <laughs> and he's just clueless. He doesn't get it. So that you guys were just chopping him down. They were. Ch- they, he literally goes, Diane, who's my stepmother. Yeah, Diane. Goes, oh, Diane. That's another shirt, Christine. Diane. <laughs> Diane doesn't like when you talk about my small penis. <laughs> That's the that should really be a t shirt. Diane doesn't like when you talk about my Diane doesn't like you talking about my small penis. But then put an asterisk for an e, so it's child friendly. <laughs> yeah, penis. Um. So. Yeah, the, he's at the stand the night before, and, yeah. and Carla and Isabella are hanging out, and they go up to her, and she goes, uh, she walked up to her first words, I believe, where it's me, Elizabeth, and he just, <laughs> and, and he, like, hugged her, like, that was right, again. <coughs> Lizzie! And they kept making joke. they kept making jokes, like, at him, that he was never fully understanding, and the one was, uh, he goes, oh, you gotta, now, Diane, without exaggeration, I don't believe has ever spoken words to Isabella. Maybe at me and Carla's wedding? Yeah. Possible? I'm sure, actually, I'm sure at some point that night she said something to her. I'm certain of it. Uh, Carla's shaking her head no, but I don't believe that. For, I'm sure she said something. She's not like uh, the pure incarnation of evil. She probably said something to her. All right, Carla, come over here and jump on a mic just to jump in with this story. Come, you have to come here. Yeah, come over here. You're getting third mic, Carla. You're getting third mic treatment. You get half of what Jay gets already. Now you get a third of this show. <laughs> you get half of my stuff and a third of the show. <laughs> yeah, that's what I went to law school for. She also, yeah. she also claims full responsibility for Legion of Skanks. Uh, yeah, it's true. Is it true? It is true. You created Legion of Skanks. It is a phrase she yelled at me once. It's oh true. Yes. yes, I know this. I know this yeah. story. Yeah, that's her face. The logo. <laughs> <laughs> So wait, so you're saying that she never spoke to Isabella? I don't think so, because she got offended and left before the reception even started. Carla's got a cute young girl radio voice. She does. It's like Stephanie, what's her name? <laughs> Stephanie Mar- 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 was, Oh, God. What Samantha Montavani. <laughs> Have you heard that? Have you heard yes. uh, Janessa saying Samantha Montavani? You yeah. know Samantha Montavani? talked about Samantha Montavani. <laughs> <laughs> That's Soder's favorite thing in the world. It really is like a child with keys. 
It just makes me. She just really has that great Philly. What a great Philly accent! You're interrupted, and I keep interrupting. That's no. Nice. Dan's always interrupting. No, it's Dan that interrupts. <laughs> Samantha Montavani. I love it. I love it so much. It's so a great you're, name. You're saying Jay's stepmom's never talked to Isabella. I don't think she's ever said a word to her. Yeah, you don't think at the wedding. Do you think even? she looked her up and down and then just kept walking? Like I just don't evil think they like had that? the opportunity to interact because she got offended. What she get offended by? Were you doing crowd work at a wedding? <laughs> no, was, she doesn't like my comedy at all. She thinks but, she thinks I'm too dirty. But she was offended because your dad, she and her dad were not included oh, in like, right. she walking was, in and that's being right. announced. She, she was pissed off because my dad didn't like have any part like in the wedding. And you're like, yeah, he didn't have any part in my life. I know this dude. Yeah, I'm like, dude, what? that's what I'm going through right now on a personal level, where you just start realizing people are just pieces of shit, and then they just expect things from you. Where they're like, yeah, yeah, I, I put in time. You're like, no, there's no time. You just, I just knew you in the '90s, and now I know you. Now. <laughs> I happen to know you that whole time. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you walk away from family if they're pieces of shit? Yeah, you should be able to. It's very difficult. It depends. I just have them die and then blame it on cirrhosis. <laughs> <laughs> you always say it's them? Yeah, I was but, like, good son. I was like Macaulay Culkin. I murdered my father. And was like, <laughs> I don't know what happened. The night before uh, the special, the, one of the funniest things he said, he always said, and man, this is a follow-up to a great thing that happened when he came to me and Carla's house years ago when Isabella mm -hmm. was still pretty young. And he came over and he goes, uh, He's like, oh, you got to bring Isabella out to Ohio. Everyone's going to spoil her so much. Because there's all boy. Now, my dad's got two sons. With yeah, my who I've met. I met one of them. Yeah. And he goes. And, and uh, as I described him, he's like you with a dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like if you had a dad in your life. I told you the Ron Bennington line that killed me at the at the mashup show when he came on. I go, man, you know, it's funny. I'm so worried about your comfort all the time that you're happy and proud of me that I really do treat you like a father. And he goes, I'm not your father. I'm just another dude who doesn't love you. <laughs> Which is such a great line. But uh, he, when he said it to back in my house, he goes, yeah, Diane uh, will love having a little girl around. Like, there's all boys in the family. Marie's got three boys, and Josie's got two boys. He goes, I got two boys. And Carla was so fast, like, you have three boys. In fact, you're telling you have two boys to the third boy. Dude, that the is, only one you're forgetting. That is such a great psych out. That if he was meaning, if he was meaning for it, it's the most evil thing. It's crazy though when you look at that. When you tell a story like that, and he says two boys instead of three, and then you uh, factor in the stepmom. That basically, if you were a guitar player, she'd be like, "You're playing all that noise." <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't like your comedy. It's just filth, and you're like, "No, it's great." Dude, one of the greatest days of my life was I left like a boombox or something on the steps when when I was there for the summer one time. Yeah, and coming home while she's icing her knees because she was. Carrying laundry downstairs and fell over it. Fell I was just like, great. You home alone, her? I was just like that. It was yeah. I said booby traps around the house. Hey, yeah. Hey, Jay. D Diane got hit with a can of paint going up the stairs. <laughs> Diane, there's a there's a pail of water over the front door. For Diane, hey, did you heat up the front door handle for Diane? <laughs> Diane came home and burned her hand. You Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. <laughs> So the two boys thing, he he blew it a couple times on that trip, which was hilarious. That was also the trip. That was also the famous trip when uh, Carla was going out dancing with a friend of hers. Yes, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and oh, she had God. her she had her boobs pushed together. She was wearing she was wearing like a sexy going out outfit. Yeah, you put on a you put on a clubbing outfit. I did. And yeah. then he was very. He uh, goes. He goes. He goes. Yeah, you're just gonna let her run around like that all the time. He goes with a with her breasts hanging out like that. And, va, va, and then he, and then I was like, uh, I was like. Whatever, man. I'm like, she's meeting us in a couple hours. Like, whatever. And he just has weird silence. And he leans forward and goes, goes, you have amazing breasts, by the way. Did not <laughs> see like, that coming. What? <laughs> it was the most awkward rest you, of the half hour drive. Carla, were you riding shotgun? Yes. So mm -hmm. when he popped in, he just popped over and was like, like a little boy. Like, like, like an Arby there yet. <laughs> Right into my cleavage. Right into your cleavage. Like, right there. Yeah, that is great. <laughs> Dude, the girl I lost my virginity to, he did, we went out to breakfast the day, when, the day I graduated high school and asked her if she's ever been with a father and son together. I mean, he's world class hilarious. That is hilarious. Fenoya loves him. He's like Fenoya's so favorite much. person in the world. Like, Fenoya thinks he's the greatest because... I wonder if Fenoya starts doing that thing where, um, like, when one of your friends starts calling your dad, dad... So Fenoya just starts calling your dad, dad. Hey, dad. What's dad. up, Pop? Oh, it's Pops is here. Pops Okerson. But it's, um, but whatchamacallit. So the night before the special, he was there. And again, Diane, it, it, we'll say limited to no 
conversation with Isabella ever. Yeah. And uh, he goes, he's outside, and he goes, he starts it up again. He goes, you, this summer, you got to bring a, Isabella. You guys got to come out to Ohio. Like, oh, having a girl out there, Diane will spoil her so much. And was it, was it Isabel? Isabella, was it you that Isabella yeah. goes, oh, my God, she was more than she spoils me now. He goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a solid line, like, Isabella. But like, almost like, but he, he was answering, he goes, yeah. He goes, you think it's crazy now how much oh. you're getting? <laughs> You it's going to be, be raining toys on you. The fictional presents that you can't stop opening, there's going to be more. It's like Hook when they eat food. You just got to imagine presents it's, are there. It's his only grandchild. He literally has never got her a birthday or Christmas present ever. I mean, yeah. yeah. There's That's, not a chance he knows when her birthday is. Not what a if, fucking chance. How about we start a GoFundMe for a bet of $1,000 for your dad? <laughs> Gets one shot, and we just play the fucking Who Wants to Be a Millionaire music. And if he can't, it's like, we'll, we'll fund it. A $1,000 bet. Her, on her birthday? Yeah, if he can guess her birthday. I'd be surprised if he could name the season she was born if we give, Wow, if we we're going to go old Navajo. Dude, if we give him... If th- you can find the moon cycle in which <laughs> the young squaw was born... <laughs> For she is one of the hoops of life, <laughs> grown into a woman. <laughs> For you, great grandfather, man who leaves son, <laughs> you come back and tell your great granddaughter. Oh, dude, I don't know if I brought them back, but it's a great. Oh, I don't think I brought them back. I wish I would have. There's a great picture of my dad holding me as a baby. And it, he really does have the face of like, how much longer I got to do this? Yeah. I sent it to you, Mike. Yeah. Remember, I said it looked like Alan Parsons holding you. Yeah. Please bring it over. Yeah, yeah, dude. This is great. Yeah. It when really, you find it, it looks. Oh, I sent it to you. Did I email it to you or I texted it to you, Mike? Yeah. Did I have it on my phone? Well, see, that's the great thing is you got. You, it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. Fantastic. It looks. He's like, can someone take this thing, dude? That is. We're gonna post it on. Uh, by the way, follow us at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Putting up all the pictures we're talking about. So Jay's dad, first off, yeah. How silver bullet band keyboard player. <laughs> Dude, your dad really does look like he runs Coke in a fucking, like a small plane. Yeah, no, it's great. And he really does. Like, his face looks really, it's like, all right, we're ready with this kid. Like, mm. he really has a face. Like, I'm not going to be around long. Yeah. He feels wet. This thing ain't mine. <laughs> are you sure this thing's mine? It's got your head. By the way, you are an adorable baby. I really, I look like I'm going like, this guy behind me is not hanging out, is he? <laughs> <laughs> is he not enjoying himself? I feel like the yeah, guy behind I don't think he likes it. Does the big guy like I, it? I, you ever, I don't, it's weird, it's hard to describe, but I feel a coldness to his touch. <laughs> I feel like he's slowly loosening his grip around my small torso. <laughs> He was so ready to be hey, out. Is it just me, guys, or is this big guy eyeing the door a lot? But it's weird because I have a not an understanding's the wrong word. Like I don't. Th- I think. I think all of his moves in this were wrong. But I get them. I get because I don't think he felt obligated or forced to be a good father to the other two. I think they were just there. I think I was just like a fucking forgotten thing from. The like, late an old, 70s. like an old shirt? I was like Quaaludes, man. I went yeah. the way of the Quaalude. Hey, you know what I just remembered on the pot? Remember my son, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Something just crept in my head. I don't know it's, what it was. I don't know if it's a heavy crap I just took, cleared out some room, but I have a son. <laughs> oh, my God. I remembered the smell of lilacs, <laughs> and then I got a boy somewhere in the Pennsylvania, <laughs> Philadelphia area. Um, did, you so ever, did you ever, as his wife, like try to like pull... His dad aside and be like, hey, why don't you fucking be decent? It was impossible. There's I only no met point. him that one time. Yeah. That one time. That was the only time he that, ever what in the wedding. That in yeah. the wedding. That and he had wedding. you he had you on your ankles the whole time. He's throwing heat like that, talking about it was, your titties. By the way, it was seven <laughs> misidentify. It was seven years into me and Carla's relationship. Isabella was six almost. No, she was like three four. She was four. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Seven, but, but it was about seven years in our relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About six, six years in our relationship. Yeah. And that was the first time. And he was like, you know what? Seven years. It's a long time. Well, I didn't talk to him Sweet for like 10. Games. I didn't talk to him for almost like a decade. Yeah. You, you told me you hadn't spoken to him in a long time when we started dating. And then at some point. He started reaching you, out. You started taking his calls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, he would start to call me once in a while. But it was so funny. One of the last calls I took was when I, I told him that I was going to do BT's comic view the first time. I'm six months in the comedy. Yeah. Get ready to be he's and he goes. Is this the is this the um strip down? Pant leg up. Yep. Yes. And uh he 
really like called me up to say he's like you know Didn't get involved in this in this business you know you're gonna need a manager and you're gonna want it to be family <laughs> like like bobby boucher it's in better, the water it's boy. better if it's family and stuff like this and i was like what what about a father and son team like Tago woods <laughs> he bobby boucher you he bobby boucher dad seniored me yeah dude that's fucking it was crazy I, t- I took that call and then i did comedy in ohio once or twice very like young into doing it like guest spots at a place yeah the one time we went, Lisa Lampanelli had me removed from the rest of the weekend from oh, guest fun. spots because she said I stole jokes of hers. Okay. Um, I was months in the comedy. Is and you- uh, and she's and they had me kicked off the rest of that weekend. And the other time we went to a place, and it was all, again, like, the funny thing is it was so, like, novice comedy. Yeah. But I was just trying to show him something. I still did, like, pine for it. You know what I remember from that trip that I went out there? He took me to shoot pool one night. And kept acknowledging these two pretty girls playing pool next to us and beat me one handed. Jesus. Yeah, and it's so funny. Your dad's a pool shark? I used to tell that story though with a very like, oh yeah, he's pretty good at pool. He did this thing one time. People kind of like, what a it's weird like chest out yeah. fucking thing to do. Like, that is kick things you could take me, but look, he's just a little fat chump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Minnesota, you're, you're the son of Minnesota fats. He Minnesota fats me. <laughs> That's his claim to fame. He says he played pool against Minnesota fats. Once. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, see? Uh, this is why Fenoy loves him. He's a yeah. guy who has stories like that. He seems like a guy that can strike a match off his bottom of his chin and light a cigarette. Yeah, but he tell, what's great about him is he tells me all these stories you know are just made up. He's oh. like, he's like, yeah, he goes, oh, you know, I saw the, them Roger Waters and the, the Pink Floyd do the wall in Rome. They did the Coliseum. I was at that show. And he also, I think he says he got in trouble in the Navy for smoking pot with David Bowie. And you're like... Shut up. <laughs> you know, crazy story. I and saw. Then I met your mom when I was working in a bowling alley several years <laughs> beyond that. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't tell you about the time I saw Elvis live on the moon. They oh. shot us all up there. You're like, that's impossible. Dude, that's so fucking funny. You just made up. Well, my dad, my dad would make up shit. My dad one time. Here's said, not a made up story that my mom went on a date with his stepbrother, my uncle Tommy, when they were boning. <laughs> When I was a little kid, uh, to see the Glass Spider David Bowie tour. Okay. Yeah. It gets pretty twisted up. That, that, that tree grows. It's like a, like a Blair Witch tree. It's like, you know, it's all weaved and it's like an evil tree. Trunks just wrapping around each other. Oh, yeah. It gets pretty weird. But then no one's blood related, but like my mom. Did, just a good time. That sounds like you're Oh, excuse. my dad, my mom definitely took a good beating from Uncle Tommy without a doubt. I just what? You're pointing out that Isabella's here? She no, doesn't know these people. Was, uh, he, told, no. he told me a fake story that you told him as special. What? He said that you talked to him all the time about how I'm never athletic. Oh, yeah, how Isabella doesn't play any sports. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he made me look like an asshole father. He wants to drag me down to the asshole father thing. He goes, yeah, hey, Jay tells me she doesn't play any sports. She's not athletic at all. I go, she plays sports all year round. Yeah. Why would I have just said that for no reason? That's yeah, hilarious. I wasn't so, worried he was going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> he said she's so tall she should really get into sports. It's like she plays. That's so every funny. Sport. That he just starts. He just starts cutting Jay at the knees. Yeah, it's crazy. He said uh, she's not a princess. She, she has no heir to the throne. <laughs> like what? Why would you say that, Dad? So funny. He says that she's uh, she's afraid of the dark. Yeah. So Jay tells me she's really boring to hang out with. <laughs> heard she uh, heard she doesn't even know how to do addition. I'm like why are you shitting on my daughter, dude? Why are you making me look like an asshole? Yeah, Jay tells me you're not all that fun to be around. Do you think there? Do you think if there would ever be an opportunity to like hash shit out? Like if you guys, I don't know what the hash shit out would be. You know what? I, I give them thanks in the world. And again, you know, and we have Lewis coming, and Lewis J Gomez coming in later, and Lewis like bizarrely beyond what anyone probably thought. Although I did see it, I think before, yeah. and several of us did. People that know him well is a fantastic father for whatever reason he is, whatever the makeup is it's that makes him do that. Like the reason I stress over and 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 want to be there for his bells it's because i i never want her to feel the way it's just funny. my dad felt about it. my dad just checked out i mean by the time i was 13 my dad was like that was already not calling on birthdays and shit but crazy you're ta- but you're talking about terrible family members it's just interesting when you have a terrible family member and you're like give up you just keep giving them repeated shots to get back in and then they don't take it and you're like come on here's an opportunity again and then you're left like uh, the last time I had breakfast with my uncle, who I didn't talk to for 12 years, and then we, we started talking again, and then we're leaving breakfast, I'm like, all right, I love you. And he's like, okay. He's like, I really need you to fire that one back. Why were you gonna... not talking to... The only reason you don't talk to an uncle is he did something to you. No, there was no shirtless hugs. <laughs> there were no baths together. It was pretty. He just dropped off the face of the earth. Michael Barry got mad at me for a few years. 
Well, I think like uh, I think especially when you don't have a dad and you you, you put a lot more pressure on uncles. Where you're no, like, no, I had no pressure on on him at all. It was it was uh, it was my fault, I guess. So he, was, he was so angry. Like, I, 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 I didn't RSVP to a wedding or something. His I burned down his house, his daughter's wedding. But I really don't like. I feel a real tight connection to my immediate family. Yeah, obviously, you know, Carla, Isabella, and then and then like uh, Christine, obviously. But I mean, like my mom. My step pop, yeah, my grandmother, you know what I mean? Like, your brother. These are the people who news about them or things going wrong, like, affect me. You know what I mean? Whether, or, or, or big thing, big good or big bad. My uncle Barry, like, I don't know wonderfully, you know what I mean? Like, uh, when I was a kid, kid, we never stayed tight in touch. And like, I didn't RSVP to the wedding, but he was like really wound up. And it's just like, when I get wedding invites for like, a, even a, a first cousin, I'm just like, no interest. Yeah. She is your first cousin. Okay. I know. Oh. <laughs> I'm saying, even like a first cousin, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't. But here's the thing. On that, like, the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about being a comedian is generally when people are doing things like that, you yeah, can't you do work. it anyway. You got to work off. So it was genuinely, I couldn't go. I just had to cancel the wedding because I got to work. I, here's the thing. I don't want to go. I, I'll go if I can go, but I can't. I miss my best buddy uh, from growing up, John. You know, John yeah. and Holly. Um, I miss their wedding because it was like, a Disney World thing, and that was when that was when Carla yeah, was supporting me financially. With she was making a couple hundred bucks a week, and I was making fifty bucks a week. They were, they were both. I think both those weddings were in Florida. Yeah, they were both. Yeah, but the other one like was a time where we could have gone, I guess. But just like no, I think you were working. We sent a gift. no, no, no. Uh, there was a miscommunication. No, we were like, working. Mm-hmm. Uh, or I was, I was definitely working. Like it was a weekend that I was definitely working for sure. But it was just a matter of like, even if I wasn't working, I couldn't have done a destination wedding. Yeah, that's a that's a fucking great picture. Of this puts a picture up of really you and is. your dad. Is yeah, really, they can't. This guy, goes, this guy behind me, he's he's not. He doesn't look that. He's that into this, does he? Well, there's a. Uh, that's the hard thing about like uh, people who aren't in comedy. I think it's hard to understand that comics work on the weekends. Most people get it, but then there's some people who are like, it just slams into something, and they're like, oh, but why can't you do? And you're like, because this is when I work. This is yeah. We make them our. Our money is made on the weekends, not during the weekdays. This is a favorite thing every comic hears from either a significant other or a friend at some point. You can't take off one Saturday. Like, yeah. I can't. Yeah. Because you know, there's 12 comics that are ready to and waiting to take your spot. Yeah. And then you might not be able to get back in there. Yeah, that's it. Next thing you know, John Fish is doing all your work. And he's a nice guy, so they're going to invite him back. He writes great jokes. God, I love his act. And now I want to hear some John Fish. Carla is great. Has such a great, you know, the me and the comic strip had our huge uh, parting of ways. Yeah, when you went all fucking roadhouse on him. It's not my first time having a, a, a gripe with that club. Remember the time I stayed on stage for like an hour and a half or something when they fired you? They, they fired Carla one time, and then I went on stage there and got mad at them and just stayed on stage for like an hour and a <laughs> you half. You pulled up a trees. Yeah, you had wait. You had a sit in. Uh, yeah, but just while shitting Andy, on the club. Who's, the, who's this? Who's this chick? You who's damn well girl? know who who's is. That, is that a new hot girl? Who is that? Shut up. Same girl. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like she's had. That's why. I mean, that's where we met. Carl. That's why I say it's weird. I always had an affection for that place because Isabella wouldn't exist without the comic strip. Did Me and Carl wouldn't have met. I'm not a club hopper, and I sure as shit was not going to get into law school. <laughs> <laughs> so we were never going to cross paths unless she was slumming it in some comedy club. So when you, so you guys met, was how new in the comedy were you? Like uh, a year. I mean, maybe two, maybe two years. Wait, in the and comedy. he was still going down to Philly. Yeah, he was still. I still lived in Philly. Philly. Still lived in Philly. How yeah. long were you living in Philly while you guys dated? Like oh, a year. Yeah, dude. We used to. We used to. Well, I'm, let me pick my words here. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I liked her so much, so I was driving. I drove. Yeah. I would stop driving with Kevin Keith sometimes because I wanted to like hang out with Carla yeah. after shows, and we'd hang out. And I would drive her back. She lived in Long Island. Wow. Oh. I would drive back to Long Island, then turn around and come back, and we would like, uh, we, like she would make out with me a little bit. Yeah. And then it really about three weeks into that, I remember telling people at home, I go, 
And I got enough about making out for all this goddamn long drive. It's like an hour and a half on my already three-hour trip. In your defense, though, I think uh, a drive from Long Island to Philly adds three days to the relationship as far as, like, well, in messing around-wise. In her defense, is she knows she's Hispanic, and we lived together for eight seconds before she was pregnant with Isabella. So, <laughs> Yeah. Jay, as you dropped your suitcase, she goes, oh, I can feel her Oh, my God. It's growing inside me. I already love it. Did you, right as you crossed the threshold of the front door... Hi, I'm having a daughter. <laughs> you know, a thing I always, uh, should I always take is that one of the names I liked for Isabella was Rochelle, which she always hated. How do you feel about that, Isabella? Love that you love Rochelle? I would, she want to be called Rocky. She wants to be called Rocky. You want to be called Rocky? We can just call you Rocky. Rocky. You want me to call you Rocky? Rocky? You're wearing a Rambo jacket. Yeah. Hey, guess what? You're Rocky now. Uh, you're Rocky to Toots Soder. Yeah. Um, hey. met, I met a girl, um, uh, one of my last two gigs, whose name was Rochelle, and I was like, oh my gosh, I wanted to name my daughter Rochelle. And I just like had to bite my tongue and go, like, but, but her mom thought it was the ugliest, stupidest <laughs> name in the world. <laughs> you have such a stupid, ugly name. Oh, but then my wife at the time was just like, gross. Walk off <laughs> yeah. a bridge if you have that name. Oh, you could <laughs> shove that name up your asshole. You know what? She goes, I'll take a, I'll take a quick jump down a flight of steps if we're going to name this thing Rochelle. <laughs> My dad suggested to my mom naming me Buck. <laughs> that was a legitimate Gary. <laughs> Buck. Yeah. Gary literally was like. You were Dan or Buck, dude. If you were Buck, Buck Soda. <laughs> if you were Buck uh, Soda. Can we just I'm make Bucks. you Buck Soda? I sure can. <laughs> right over there is my friend Rocky. Hi, I'm Buck Soda. This is Rocky Oakers. And I'm the number one Nissan dealer in all of Colorado Springs. So come on down, I 25, and stop. Hop off over a Buck Soders Nissan. And Just now, hop on down. I'll save you a buck or two. Uh, my, yeah, if you want to save a buck, come and talk to Buck. Hi, I'm Buck Soder. <laughs> Don't forget, if you're gay, I can refuse service because of my religious beliefs. No shirt, no shoes, no sword swallowers. No problem. Come on in. If you're barefoot, hell, I'll put you in a car myself because you're probably mentally unstable. I'm trying to turn our highways into one giant... Set of smash I forgot what it's called Bumper cars I want to talk like that From now on That's fun Buck Soda Yeah I hi. can't believe you I didn't know I told you mine was That I was my dad Was going to name me Oscar Oak <laughs> With double O <laughs> Could you imagine a fat little kid named Oscar Okerson? The alliteration. You would have been the, the, Angus. The two, I would have been, been Angus. I was already Angus, but at least my name was Jay. That's hilarious. Oh, dude, already Oscar Okerson. Oscar and Buck. Well, you know what it was? They wanted to name... Oscar and Buck show. <laughs> That's definitely a morning zoo. My mom... My, oh, no, I'm sorry. You know what it was? I'm, I'm saying that totally wrong. Yeah. My mom was going to do that. I don't give a shit. The only good thing... <laughs> the only good, No, because the only good thing... Gary Gary ever did. It was stop that. We'll stop that from happening. That's he's a like, lot. He's like, that's a lot, that though. That's big. Lot. That is big. He's that, Kyle Reese. He yeah. went back. You sent him back in time to stop <laughs> Oscar Oakers. Yeah. Come with me if you want to not kill yourself in seventh grade. Yeah. I'm sending you back to change my name. I, you just got, you're all scarred up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have a CPAP machine on all the time because I have sleep apnea even when I'm awake. Gosh, Dad, I need to send you back in order to name me Jason. And then I can become the comedian. I wish I was destined to be. <laughs> dude, Oscar Okerson would have had a rough go. Oh, I remember one Oscar. He was fat as hell, black, and he was like slow, unathletic, played in all the sports, but couldn't do any good. You know how many times I would have been punched in the side of the head if my name was Buck Soder? Nobody would have punched him. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, You'd have been dating the hot girl at school, and then Kevin Bacon would have came and started dating her, and you would have almost killed him in a tractor and, chicken. And thing. I would have just looked at him through clenched jaw. Yeah. Mm, I don't like this new kid coming mm, around with his quiet riot mm, tapes. Mm, dancing is illegal. <laughs> we got to take a break. We obey the law here, right Good. here. We'll be right back to the Buck and Oscar show. <laughs> it's the bonfire. <laughs> oh, look. Spring is in the air, and it's time to get outside and start moving again. I did. You know, more exposure to natural light in the morning helps reset your body's clock for a better night's sleep. Didn't know that. Yeah, well, here's the information. If you really want to sleep your best, it may be time to replace your old mattress with my bed, but you've already done that. Yes, I have. The sleep number bed. It's the only bed that adjusts on each side to your ideal comfort. 
Uh, your sleep number setting. Mine, 75. So do I know yours. 55. Yeah, but I think I'm bumping down to a 45. You're going down. I'm going to go Too down. firm. Are you having some back issues? I don't know. I just want to see how soft I can get. Well, the sleep number bed lets you pick your ideal firmness, and then you can change it. And because it adjusts on each side, it's the perfect bed for couples. When you add the optional Sleep IQ technology, it tracks your sleep so you know how to adjust for your best night's sleep. Whether it's adjusting my sleep number setting, cutting back on caffeine, or exercising more, which is eerie that it knows those things. Yeah, and uh, I've been I've been tinkering with it a little bit. How do you like it? I I, I like it. it just I said it scares me because it's going to tell me it's like what like we said. You you stopped breathing for a half. Why hour. did you wake up and take your money out of the bank? <laughs> well, you can't afford to compromise your sleep. You can't afford to uh, what? <laughs> Two so many sentences way close together, Jacob. <laughs> that have the same words in them. You can't afford to compromise your sleep, Boom. but you can afford a sleep number mattress. There it is. Because it's starting at only $799.98. That is two cents less than $800. And that is perfect math. And it's a steal, so you can know better sleep. Find your sleep number setting only at any of our over 500 sleep number stores nationwide. Find one near you by going to sleepnumber.com. And be sure and tell them Buck Soder sent you. And that I sleep just like a log on a river. <laughs> and now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, that is Skin Row. We're getting pumped up for Louis J. Gomez coming in the studio. That is it's a real ass right it's there. real ass music all day. Real ass music day. I'm Big J Okerson. That's Dan Soder. Dan will be at the comic strip in Edmonton, Canada this week. Oh boy. April seventh, Thursday. Get through my, Saturday, April 9th. Get my ghillie suit on. Get the ghillie suit on. Uh get your tickets at DanSoder.com. And Big J gonna be up at Laugh Boston, Massachusetts this week. Tomorrow through Saturday, get tickets at BigJComedy.com. And then Louis J. Gomez is going to be headlining the Ha Comedy Club in Yonkers April 15th and 16th. Get tickets at HaRidgeHill.com. Um, and we got more plugs coming up. Carl Oakers will be dancing at the Brass Pony right off the Bruckner Expressway this, yeah. this Saturday and Sunday. First hour with Carla Okerson. <laughs> Just talking family. <laughs> talking Oscar and Buck. Oscar and Buck, man. That Dude, is, I, uh, oh, man. I just got a tweet from... Uh, from a Pittsburgh Nissan dealership saying they're trying to change their name to Buck Soder Nissan. I mean, that should happen. His P PGH East Nissan at PGA East Nissan on Twitter said, I've already gone to management. But, but then you get go. but then you get all to do all the low-level commercials. Oh, absolutely. Like, the local commercial. Soda, Listen, yeah. if they give me a Maxima, hell, I'll even take uh, an Altima. Dude, I'll I take want, a nice full size Altima. I want you, you to wear a belt buckle that'll make Cat Williams upset. Oh, dude, are you? I want it. I want the belt buckle to be a giant state of Colorado <laughs> with horns coming out, of it. <laughs> and then I'll come out with a nice You're like Danzig. First off, yeah, I got to bring this up. On the walk to the studio today, Jacob grabbed the mic. Uh, I found out that Jacob, huge fan of cowboy hats. Look. Is he? He's got like a fetish. I'm buying one in, when I go to Austin. By the way, we're going to be Moon Tower. We're gonna really? Be we're going to be doing two live bonfires at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival, Austin, Texas, on Friday, April 22nd, and Saturday, April 23rd at 4 p.m. Go to austintheater.org for badges if you want to see the shows. Hey, come hang out. Do we know how we're doing it? Like, what's it set up like or anything? I don't know. I think we're going to have two guests to show, and then hopefully, you know, there's like a cool two venue. Venues, two guests. Two venues, two guests. And I heard Friday the venues. I heard the venues are amazing. And, uh, you know. Jacob's going to be ear to ear because he gets to go buy a cowboy hat. And you said you wanted a straw cowboy hat. No, no, I have a straw cowboy hat for the summer buying a felt one. Thank you, Andy. Andy's shaking his head, and I told Jacob straw. You got a straw cowboy hat, like a hot chick wearing yeah. like a half top? No, yeah. No, at a bachelorette party? No, guys and girls wear them in Austin. No, they're they not don't. wearing them in New York. I bet. I just bet your cowboys are like, you sure, buddy? Why don't you put on that straw I got a straw hat. <laughs> Sure, little guy. Why don't you put I on that? I a picture that'll disprove all of this. Do you I like want you to wear Daisy Dukes with your straw cowboy hat. <laughs> and I want to see bottom butt. <laughs> and I want to watch. I just imagine Jacob. So, uh, I imagine Jacob sexily gets on a mechanical bull. Where he oh. just takes it and just starts riding it perfectly. And his, his nips keep coming out. And we're, and, and we're all in the background going, he knows that's happening. Yeah. He knows that's happening. <laughs> and he picks but he like puts his hair, he doesn't even have a ponytail. He puts like a, a bracelet around his thing and then puts a cowboy hat on. Woo! And they're like, I don't know who that guy is, but he... Kick her up. I said, kick it to seven! <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a stranger to the range. How many seconds did I break the record? Call me Luke Perry, because this must be eight seconds. <laughs>
Oh, dude, I love the fact that you have... That's an obscure reference. It's a great reference. Luke Perry. I-, I had to watch eight seconds because my ex-girlfriend was a rodeo chick. <laughs> Cheryl Sleater, man. She was a she was a barrel racer. <laughs> you, wait, we got Jacob in a straw hat. You don't. You look like you're mocking the Mexican people. <laughs> hey, everybody! I can't wait oh. for that wall. Jacob, we can get you a better hat than that. Jacob, are you gonna wear cowboy hats the, the whole time? The time. All You're right. being a cat. So the oh. me and you are wearing cowboy hats the whole show. Yeah, yeah. come with me and buy it. Yeah, All we, right. will. We, will. we will. I see you in a black hat and Dan in like a nice tan. Oh, uh, you know what? I think we should. We get... uh, let me pick it out. Yeah. Please. Oh, but can I get great. ones with the folded up sides? You want a hat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I know. I told her today I don't want a fucking hat. Are think... you going to Moon Tower? Yeah. Well, I don't think there's enough leather out there to make a hat for me. It's a, <laughs> a hat for Do you know how many cows had to die for Soder's hat? Yeah. <laughs> Just slicing through. That's that's only the brim. Uh, I want a rolled up one like young Pamela Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> they have. <laughs> all right, we're getting cowboy hats. Nice. No. Why? I don't want. He's been looking at him. All, he's been looking at him all day. You're so gonna get, get a cowboy hat. Get, guess there what? All day he goes. Hey, about this one? How guess about this what, one? motherfucker? You're getting one. Lou, you're going, Not yeah? the money he's spending. He's looking at like $250 hats. Are you going to be there? Yeah, we're going. Me and Jacob are going. You and Jacob are going? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Hat up. Lou's not coming. <laughs> if, if someone buys me one, but I'm not spending Come my own goddamn money on well, a fucking cowboy hat for yeah, one weekend. Yeah, you asshole. I'm not buying my own cowboy ghillie hat. Ghillie suit, I'm all about. But... Dude, ghillie suit, that's getting paid for, first off. <laughs> we got the budget for the ghillie suit. I have uh, CC's throwing down on ghillie suits. Which, by the way, we're going to storm this whole fucking building. I can't wait to get. I'm going to take pictures <laughs> and email you tomorrow. I'm going to text you pictures tomorrow. Friday, pick them up. Saturday, around arrange the shipment. Hopefully, get them by Wednesday's show. Oh, I, we I know. A, we got I know you. Tape next Wednesday. I know you, and you're the same way. Yeah, like, I'll get them Saturday. No, no, I'm saying you're the same as me though. With this, like, your new toy guy. You're going to try on both ghillie suits before you like before you ship those things. I know. Do you, you think are. I'm not going to ask management if I can take a walk around the mall? With it? You're going to be in a condo, uh, in a ghillie suit by yourself. Are you staying at the condo? And I'm bringing my PlayStation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be playing PlayStation in a ghillie suit. You're going to be like, is that just is that lump of grass playing Madden? Hey, why is it just me or is that shrub amazing at running a West Coast offense with a Colin Kaepernick <laughs> Madden offense? Uh, we, uh, real quick, we were talking about names that we were almost given. Jay was almost named Oscar. Oscar and Buck. Oscar, and I was almost named Buck. But Raul in San Antonio. Hey, what's up, dude? You might have one of the worst possible names. Raul. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? You're, oh, man, you're in a windstorm. So real quick, what did your parents almost name you? Scooter. Holy shit. Bro, you're in San Antonio. Are you a coyote? What's happening? Are you are yeah. you running from Minutemen right now? Hold on, I'm just watching if my people get across. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, no, that's it's uh, yeah. No, thanks these, for calling in, Raul. These families gave us a lot of money. Scooter's <laughs> a bad one. Scooter's a pretty bad one. Hey, yeah, really, you know it's funny, there's someone else uh on the line, Ray Ray from Louisiana, who I thought was gonna say, Well, my name's Ray Ray, but it's has nothing to do with the names at all. <laughs> <laughs> We have a, uh, true, man. I got I got one of these new car vehicles down here in Louisiana, man. I got the Sears that them on it, and I heard you guys on the bonfire, and I was like, man, I like fires. So I started listening to you boys, man, and, and I heard Buck, and I was like, I got vehicles down here I'm trying to sell, and we should go in on this too, brother. Yeah, but, well, here's the big question. Do you have a license, and are you paying taxes? No. <laughs> yeah, or is this just you in your front lawn with me trying to get people in there with like one of those whirly signs? Well, I'm down here in the bayou. We don't have much for lawn types down here, but I, think I love it. Three more people with uh, uh, an adequate amount of teeth, more than two. Okay. No sign on this with us, and we'll get but, right on. But Ray, Ray, that's not a job. <laughs> that's not a job for Buck, sir. That's a job for Gator, so. Oh, you want to get the Gator down in the muck <laughs> and selling calls and snapping and a clapping? <laughs> Throw me a whole I, chicken breast, and I just can't okay, go and eat it. Come on down here; it's gonna be a little swamp. Oh, you want a gumbo of savings? <laughs> Come on down to Gator's <laughs> Gator Ford. A gumbo of savings. That's what I'm talking about, man. I throw my sister in there, and we'll have a good old yeah. Year. They are, that's they are the families down there. They don't have that same like you better not touch my sister. It's all like you could have her. Oh, it would be an honor if you took a run at. Hey, her. Man, I got one thing I want to say, man. For for I get on off of here, man. What's, What's that, up, Ray Ray? Talking about Jacob. Ooh. Ooh. 
<laughs> sweet, sweet pussy. Talk about Jacob. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Ray Ray. Good call, brother. Um, Christine, can you bring up, actually, he just got me with a reminder. Have you seen that car commercial yet? Which one? The, the, the black dude in the Bronx. Have you seen this? is so hilarious. Dude, first off, I don't know if we ever... I think we talked about this on the podcast we never released, but do you remember those Queens uh, Honda commercials I showed you? No. For Hillside Honda? It, with the girl on the cell phone? Yeah, where they were hitting yeah, on each yeah, other, yeah. Where, where she just has a laptop in front of a car dealership, yes. like a maniac. No, I haven't seen this, this new and one. She's like, I'm on HillsideHonda.com. And so the next one's them living together? You find it on World Star for sure. It's, a guy, it's like this guy's series. It's, like it's from a while ago, though. It's from or anything? No, if you type up like a... Uh, Black guy car dealership. Yeah, hood, hood car dealership. We're selling hoods down at Buck Nissan. I would love to run. You got to find this thing. This is great. He just curses in it and stuff. Really? See, I'm trying to get rid of this motherfucker. This motherfucker usually costs about 5000 I sell this motherfucker 3500 <laughs> It's You got to find it completely. Hold up. This is a lie. Earl in Maryland, come on. Come on. Why? Why? Earl, That's is this no true? Joke. That's true. I swear to God. What I'm were you almost named? Isca Bibbles. What does that even mean? A uh, hell of I know. Iska Bibble? Yeah, my father said he was going to go around when people say, what's, what's your son name, little boy? Iska Bibble. That's the name of a uh, the name of a cheesesteak place in Philly. Iska Bibble? Iska Bibbles. But I thought it was just a nonsensical word. And it means little boy? No, no. That's what my father was going to tell people. That was That's my name. When they ask, what's your son name, uh, little boy? Oh. Maybe it's just a name so you wouldn't be upset about being named Earl. Yeah. That's got to be a toughie oh. for a... Th- no, I'm saying it's got to be a tough for a, th- like a three-year-old named Earl. Earl's an adult is not even something you think about. Earl's an old black man. But same thing, it's, 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 like, a, it's like, a, like a six-year-old Stanley is like yeah. tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those are very adult names. Yeah, I got a friend that's named... George? Her- yeah, I just, just going to say that. My friend's naming her son George. That's tough. Her, her, she's naming her son George. I'm like, that's but you a, could do Georgie. Yeah, but when they're a little kid. But, but George is like, but by the time he hits like 25, he'll just be a man. Yeah, you man up real quick. You what have you to got? Be. You have a oh, um, that Iskabib. That's a tough one, Earl. Well, thank God it didn't happen. And now you're you share a wonderful first name with the legend DMX. Fenoya, jump on Mike real quick. Yeah. What did you almost get named? Butch Fenoya. Butch. Uh, my old Butch? man went with Butch. Yeah. Dude, if we could have been Butch, Buck, and Oscar, <laughs> that sounds like a bunch of good old boys. This radio show would be doing fantastic. And we'd be playing a lot of Clinton Black and Alan Jackson. <laughs> Absolutely. Every time, it would be Buck Soder with his buddy Butch and Oscar. <laughs> sounds like Butch, Butch and Buck would be beating up Oscar a lot. No way. Oh, is this it? This is it. Here. All right. Thanks, got- uh, thanks for calling in, brother. Y'all got something. You got to play this. 6707 Cash Car. We tired of all of y'all talking about. Do y'all got something nice? Yes, we do have something nice if you got that nice cash. Hold on. His voice does not match what he looks like. Yeah, you think it's going to be a woman. He, he, it sounds like a chick, and he's a giant black dude. Yeah, and he's holding like a towel the whole time. Hey, everybody. Sometimes I get sweaty, and that's why I have to take off my hat. Yeah, I want some cars. I'm going to fuck y'all up. Go. He probably would fuck us up. 06 Cadillac, 6500. Another 06 Cadillac, 4500. Look on the inside. Pause clean, it for a second. He goes, look on the inside. It's clean, and it is clean, but there's like oh, there's like a water bottle in there and, and a pack of Newports. That's <laughs> like, really funny. He's, he's been clearly ins- using it recently. Yeah, he's inside right now, so you got to get out before he comes out of the store. <laughs> yeah. Look how clean it's in. This boy keep his car clean. I can only stall him for another <laughs> half hour. My sister's sucking him off in the broom closet. You better get down here with some good credit. <laughs> Play it, go ahead. Same room so big, you can stick two fat bitches out the <laughs> I'm sold. It just pans back to show me All in right. a suit. Absolutely. Y'all want a nice SUV? Look, we got some new shit. $5,000. Would you go to another lot and put down, bitch, you can own. You can own. We <laughs> <laughs> bitch, you can own. <laughs> we need that drop. I like him calling you, bitch. Bitch, bitch, you can own. No, cash car. Then look, check this out. We got the teenage special. Look at the motor on this motherfucker. Clean as a motherfucker. You hear me? Air work, heat work. Fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. Fifteen hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Cash cards. It's just being like time hour, boy. Time out. Best part of the commercial: huh? the guy filming on his iPhone getting caught in the window. <laughs> you can see him filming on his Oops. phone. 
Where he's like, $1,500, that's a deal. And he's like, oh, sorry, sorry. This is great. He throws in a two-car deal. Why would you come to get two cars when you're one shot? Because you're a baller-ass motherfucker. You're right. Check it out. Week special. I will give you this neon. Okay. And this Durango. Okay. I love a neon. I like a two nice neon. Two for 35. You can't beat this shit. You know what I mean? Two for 35. Two for 35. Cash car. Right on the lot. Right line. next to Midwest Custom. Right across the street from Lucy's. <laughs> and you can get weed right across the street. Wilms next door. And liquor across the street. 6707 Prospect Cash Car. Come on. Please. By the way, that's a a Dodge cool. Neon and that thing for... I, I, I almost want to go. Yeah. A Dodge Durango? Guys, b- campers, let's find out where this Clean is. Clean in a motherfucker. That'd be great if we just, uh, because of our radio show, we sold all of his cars. <laughs> He's like, wow, that was a good deal. What's the Angel, address again? Angel from above. <laughs> These motherfuckers sent their fans to buy two cars at once. Uh, Andrew in California. I, I want to believe this. Andrew, what is your real name? Well, my middle name is Fonzie. Oof. That is, Andrew Fonzie. Mean, and clearly you were named after Fonzie. No, actually I was adopted. And my, my original name was Alfonso. Huh? Oh. Okay. So my parents changed it to Fonzie. F-O-N-Z-I-E. I mean, that's just, so, your, so your adopted parents are not only great people to take in a kid, but they're hilarious. Yeah, they go, <laughs> yeah. when they adopted you, they go, here's the deal, Alfonso. Two steps forward, one step back. <laughs> we're going to adopt you. You have a life now. You have but, a home, a warm place to sleep. Unfortunately, we're going to change your middle name to Fonzie. <laughs> middle name's going to be Fonzie. That's so, just happening. Hey, get in the car. <laughs> hey. Hey, I'm your new dad. <laughs> hey, Fonzie, go bang the TV. Turn it on for me. That's what they're doing the whole time. They keep clicking it on and off. They're like, watch. He hits it. Turn it on. Watch little Fonzie. Hey. Yeah. Hey, don't you think you're being mean, bossing around like that? He goes, hey, my kid. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a rental. <laughs> this is a rental. <laughs> I'm renting this kid to own. <laughs> Troy, I got it from Troy Aikman and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Um, oh, yo, hold on. There's there's one more. This one? Yeah, Brandon. That's a good one, too. Brandon, what were you almost named? I was almost named Herbert. Sweet. <laughs> That's a good name. That's like it Herbert. Was my, it was my grandfather's first name, and they were going to give it to me as a middle name. But thank God they gave me Frank instead. Good for you, Brandon. Brandon that's, Frank. That's great. You know what's funny? It's I, always whenever you say a person's full name, it always sounds like they're in trouble. You want, you want to make you have a lot of enjoyment right now, Soder? This is mm-hmm. going to make you happy. So the, the story of the Oscar thing was my my grandmother's brother yeah. who fought in World War II. Okay. Uh, died before I was born. She was very close to her brother. His name's Oscar. Got it. Good looking dude, soldier, you know what I mean? Great at crowd work. Great, fantastic at crowd work. That's right. A lot of people say that's where I get it from. Yeah. It's, it's um, straight from it's your mother's side. It's great at crowd work. <laughs> <laughs> Loves the fingerless gloves. I mean, this guy is really, if you look at an old picture, it's me. It's bizarre. Um, no, and what happens, they were going to meet Oscar Okerson, and then my dad was like, let's not do that. And my name's uh, Jason Michael Okerson. It's okay. not, you know, it's not, Oscar's not in there. So they decided to do that my Jewish name Oh, as his name, which is Asher. Oh, I've always known that. I don't. I, I don't have no any connection to it really, other than that's my my Jewish name is Asher. Asher. Yeah, some people love that. I love that. I yeah. love that even more because I'm just gonna. I'm thinking whenever you're doing business deals, I'll be like Asher. Asher Okerson. Asher Okerson. <laughs> Lachaya. My name is Asher Okerson. Hello, it's Asher Okerson. I'm here to do a business deal <laughs> now. Transactions with my friend Buck. I do business like my friend Oscar that lives in the garbage can on Sesame Street. <laughs> I get angry. I disappear. Then I pop back out. I'm a bit of a grump. I'm a bit of a frump. Uh, yeah, there's a um, Herbert is a tough one. You got to be Herbie, Herbie, or Bert. Oh yeah, that's but, really well, Bert tough. works though. But you know what's funny? When someone's named Bert, I've never assumed it was Herbert. Isn't that weird? Because the only Bert I knew growing up, Bert Ernie. No, well, yes, yeah, obviously that, but it was uh, a kid named Norberto. Oh. And he went by Bert. And then there's Bert Kreischer, but I wonder if Bert's Herbert. My, my, uh, one of my best friends named, yeah, my best friend Mike, his middle name is Rico. Yeah. And it's just a hilarious name because he's like a white guy. <laughs> yeah. And I remember being. Is it Frederico? I think it's, I don't know what it is, but the first time I saw his license, I read it. I was like, Rico? And it just made me laugh, and he didn't find it funny. He was like, yeah, it's my uncle's name. I was like, your name, your middle name's Rico. He's like, yeah. Yeah. I think people get like weird, like, 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 you know, it's bizarre. My mom's middle name is Felice. 
<laughs> and her first name is Terry, but not it's, it's Felice. Terry, it's Terry with an I, daughter yes. with a heart. Felice, daughter with an I. Terry Felice, Terry daughter Felice. with a heart. Yeah, very very weird. I keep looking at this because he brings up a good point. You think? Did he will it? Do you think it's what happened? People want to know. People on on the line want to know, Jacob, if you killed Merle Haggard today. Did you will him dead? I would never do that. You love Merle Haggard. Yes. Glenn Fry. Oh, you like Merle Haggard because he wears hats. Oh, he's on Team Hat. You like a guy who wears a good cowboy hat. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Merle Haggard. Rest in peace. So you didn't kill him? No way. You're sad about that. I'm a little. Well, Glenn Fry, good riddance. Good riddance, Glenn Who Fry. cares? Yeah. Glenn Fry, I just imagine you taking off leather gloves by one by the finger and going, that problem is solved. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've handled that. Thanks for calling in, Nick from Indiana, asking if Jacob willed another celebrity death. And that's what I'm talking about right now. We're going to take a break because we're coming back with the real ass dude, a.k.a. the Puerto Rican Hang rattlesnake. On. But I want to ask Carla. She has to have, in that crazy large Hispanic family, Oh, bizarro names. My mom's name. Oh yeah, it is what? Zahira. Zahira. That, is that sounds weird. like she's going to put a hex on you with chicken bones. No, it sounds like what she is—an angry woman who tattoos her makeup on. <laughs> that's what Zahira is. <laughs> that's what Zahira is. That's what Zahira is supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, that My is for sister, sure. Paola. What Paola? Your yeah. sister's name's Paola. But it's Paola. Paola. But it's Paola. It, no, it's Paola. Yeah. Paola. It's yeah. Paola. What can you say? I think that anything that ends in a vowel, you can say in a Spanish accent, and it sounds like a real name. Crayola. I know. Why did Carla got like a a fucking wait a diner waitress's name? What? <laughs> Carla's Carla's a good name. Carla's a name that that's a name that you know she's gonna get you out of jail. Carla? This is it's true. Carla. This I gotta call true. Carla. She's gonna get me right out. <laughs> she's gonna, this is true. Ask she's gonna bust me out. <laughs> when we come back, I mean, we'll just keep talking names with our guests when we come back. Oh, hell, oh yeah, I'm sure. Louis J. Gomez true. is gonna be headlining the Ha Comedy Club in Yonkers, New York, April 15th and 16th. Get tickets at HaRidgeHill.com. Big J gonna be at Laugh Boston all this weekend, tomorrow through Saturday. Go get tickets at BigJComedy.com and I will be headed to the comic strip where he's going to be checking out some ghillie suits. I'm bringing them back, baby. That's this week, Thursday, April 7th through Saturday, April 9th. Get tickets at dancestore.com. Also, make sure you listen to Lewis on the countdown on Sirius XM 93 and the Real Ass Podcast, available on Gas Digital Network, as well as the Legion of Skanks. Right back with the Burton Oscar Show, a.k.a. the Bonfire. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Wow. Oh. It is real ass music here uh, on the bonfire. The real ass dude, the Wait, Puerto Rican rattlesnake. Did you listen to the whole song? No. No way. It's Sirius XM 95 County Central Radio. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson, a.k.a. Buck and Oscar. Joining us in studio, another part of the Legion of Skanks, the real ass dude, Louis J. Gomez. Yeah. <laughs> We're playing real ass music all day on the show, so he uh, we asked him what song he wanted from um, Skid Row. Skid Row. Skid Row. I, don't, I don't. I don't know anything about. He that. went deep cut. Yeah. He well, no, I didn't want to pick the fucking classics or the hits that everybody knows. We played a hit earlier because we don't. Know, I don't know Skid Row. Why we want to play the hits everyone would love and enjoy and sing along with in their car when we could play some. Some back catalog stuff. Yeah, this well, is some stuff that even they forget they wrote. I'll be honest with you. Someone, will, someone will call in and say that they like love this song. This is they a great were, tune. Absolutely, this is one of the best. This, no, I mean they say they is, know it. This is the best album, Slave to the Grind. People think the uh, Skid Row. The youth Gone Wild. No, that was uh, no. Skid Row. Self-titled, right? Yeah, self-titled, and that album is whack compared. To slave to the ground. First of all, the word wax whack. <laughs> well, <laughs> second of all, it is. Super I don't, we don't go negative here. Yeah. Whack is not. That's whack. <laughs> that's not. That's whack. Being negative is whack. Being negative is whack, Lewis. We're positive here. We give, we give Bayside High uh, positivity in yeah. here. Which We're all great. Fal- um, false and pumped in from NBC. <laughs> Um, I never heard that song before, and I, I know a decent amount of Skid Row music. Yeah. We've been talking uh, all show about names that we were almost given. Obviously, that's why I said Buck and Oscar. I don't know if you know that. Jay was almost named Oscar. I thought Isabella, they, they made you change the name of the show. Isab- yeah, I mean, I would absolutely. Isabella, was, and- Isabella was almost Rochelle. Yeah. You wanted to name your daughter after a black person? I did, apparently. Is that what it is? But we renamed- Carl hated it. We renamed her today Rocky, and that's a good one, right? 
What's up, Rocky? What's up, Rocky? What were you almost named? Uh, I, well, my mom, I don't know, because my mom was apparently a liar. Like, she had a bunch of fucking lies. Like, no, she, she was a junkie. She told me she was friends with Madonna. Like, I believe that for, for my whole life. Big J's dad, dad saw Pink Floyd in Rome. And said he smoked weed with David Bowie. Also lies. <laughs> my, dad, <laughs> my dad had a drink with Willie Nelson, which I'm pretty sure was a lie. <laughs> All of our parents are sociopaths. Did and my, my mother, dad played pool at Minnesota Fats once. I mean, oh. she literally told me she was friends with Madonna. Like, she grew up with her and hung out with her. And up until we were, like, in the sixth or seventh grade, we would just tell people, that and then people started making fun of us like hey, mom's friends with madonna where's your mom from patterson new jersey her whole life yeah madonna's from michigan yeah well what are you gonna do <laughs> maybe she they moved on into patterson and somehow madonna's like ah, i just feel like there's a girl in patterson who could be a really good friend to me <laughs> i'm ahead there they were we were pen pals yeah we there was start... no internet back then you could just be a superhero in your kids minds yeah man just tell them all kinds of nonsense i wish i almost wish my mom would have given me the dad died in war thing <laughs> i finger fucked paula abdul when time in 89. <laughs> Turns out opposites do attract. <laughs> <laughs> MC Scat Cat was beaten off in a corner. I so was cool. the inspiration <laughs> for DJ Scat Cat. <laughs> Just jerking off watching. Going, <laughs> 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 we got together. <laughs> um, what were you almost named, though? Well, my mom told me that my name was almost Hector, which is my father's name. Great. Tuffy. Yeah, but then I found out very recently that I have an older brother named Hector that my dad had with another woman. What? Yeah. I got a brother and a sister that I don't know. Are they also professional shadow boxers? <laughs> can, we, can we go see if it... <laughs> you just go to, like, the vice president of Allstate? Is Hector, <laughs> Hector Gomez? This is how he warms up for board meetings. Yeah, nobody ever... Nobody ever shadow, shadow box, boxing gym. They never throw... <laughs> they never throw sh kicks into the shadow box. There's no, ki there's no gonna, shadow kickboxers. Can I start doing... Tie? Oh, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> shadow clinch? Uh, <laughs> knee. Knee. Yeah. Elbow. Yeah. All tactical moves. Can we do a reunion... Show on the bonfire, or I mean, obviously, that'd be on Legion of Skanks. Will we bring your brother and sister? Ah, fuck it, let's do it on the bonfire. I'm over Legion now. This is okay. great. <laughs> this I is so fun. Energy, Isn't this oh, nice? Man. The lighting. We got to get Dave in here. I mean, really, just grow this whole thing out. Just build it out. Yeah. Build it outwards. <laughs> um, we got all this land to build. <laughs> Kick down some of these stupid walls. I mean, we can just violently take over the OP studio. Who's going to stop us? Right. Sherrod, we need a few people to hold Sherrod back, but Kurtz, that's easy pickings right <laughs> we there. We need to set up a bear trap for Sherrod, and then it's over. <laughs> Perfect ghillie suits coming next we're, week. Yeah, we're getting ghillie suits. What are ghillie suits? Show, can you show Lewis what a ghillie suit is? I would love to see what a ghillie suit is. We're getting these from Edmonton. I'm, I'm really going to go buy these. You're going to love this, Lewis. Oh, man, I can't wait. Oh. What, what Sniper are, suits. Oh, okay, I get it. We're covered in... We're gonna, you guys are gonna dress like Muppets? Yeah, I know. We're gonna awesome. dress. We're gonna dress like Terrain. <laughs> you guys are dressed like Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> but it would be pretty awesome to dress like the Muppets in the Phil Collins video. Oh, this is the uh, Land of Confusion. Yeah, Land of Confusion. <laughs> if you guys are gonna be Muppets, you would definitely be a big bird. And you would definitely be Snuffleupagus. Those are Muppets. Those oh. are Sesame Street. Whatever. Oh, Lewis, that's not a nice <laughs> thing to say about your friend. Come on and take a walk, Lewis. <laughs> That's not a real ass thing to say about your pal. You're almost going Eeyore. I know. I'm lost oh. on that. I Isabella didn't grow up with Sesame Street. Did you? It's, it's come full circle now. Now <laughs> Lewis, she grew up with the Saw movies. Lewis's son. <laughs> it's true. She did. Oh, very young, I had Isabella watch it. She, when, when Isabella's sick, she puts on a movie, and she's like, I want to play a game. And she's like, this just makes me feel better. You know, very young, very young, uh, I had Isabella watching Child's Play. We watched some pretty... She's not really afraid of anything. Did you ever, yeah, made Isabella, her Isabella, Isabella fear. real question. <laughs> Did you, like, you're not a kid who's afraid of, like, you don't seem to be afraid of the dark very much. I mean, I know you like sleeping with TV, like your old man, chip off the old block. <laughs> I'm not scared of, I'm scared of heights. I'm like. But that's what I mean, but you're not afraid of, like, dark or being alone or, like, I'm weird. I'm scared like, of like, being alone in the dark. Yeah, but horror movies, do horror movies scare you? Do you think about them late at night ever and get weirded out? There was one movie, I forgot what it was, but, like. They were like chasing this young girl, and then like for the rest of the day, I thought that lady was chasing me. Wait, yeah, was it well, that it happened, follows? Was it it follows? Yeah, yeah, that movie freaked me out. I don't the like lady how comfortable was... she is on air. I mean, she's a natural. She's she takes to it. She takes to it like a duck to water. Uh, <laughs> that freaked you out that you'd be chased by disease? Well, yeah. learn about the message of that movie. You know what? I freaked me out was the old lady in the piss. Are you telling your thirteen year old daughter to wrap it up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just worried some past bad decisions are going to come back for me. Just know yeah. if you do anything weird with guys.
that old creepy lady's going to chase you around forever. <laughs> That's how you yeah, you parent through horror films. She's her now, personified. If you have a sister suffering from scoliosis in the attic, do not feed her <laughs> yeah. or she will die. It is a uh, it is kid the kid though. Like I watched horror movies as a kid. My mom would have me watch them with her and mm-hmm. I was terrified of it. it would it would make me stay up all but night. But she would hold your shoulders down and make you <laughs> yeah, She made me watch it. And what's funny is when my little brother Bobby was a was a little kid, maybe like 7 or 8 years old. He was still the same height. I had him watch. Yes, he was he he had maxed out at height. <laughs> And uh, I had him watch, I was babysitting one time, and I let him watch Silver Bullet, the werewolf movie, and he had a fear seizure. <laughs> <laughs> he had an actual fear seizure. He just, he just, at one point, he was like, it was so weird, dude. It freaked, like, I was also still a nervous kid, even though I was babysitting him. I wigged out because he was like, I was like 16 or 17, and I wigged out because he's watching TV. He's like, this is scary. And I'm like, ah, stop being a queer, you blah, blah, blah. And, and he's like, and at one point, he just like, he was just staring at the TV blank. And I'm like, Bobby, what's wrong, dude? Bobby. I'm like, and then I pushed him, he's like, fell over. <laughs> but he was petrified. He petrified himself. They said he had a seizure. Oh, uh, shit. Jay, Jay, get my wallet. Put it on my phone. I take a lot of credit for being a good babysitter growing up and how involved I was in those kids' lives and helping. And when you go talk to them now, yeah. they're like, remember when you put like a, like a, Coke can in a sock and clunked Bobby over the head with it. And like, remember you hung us over the railing by our ankles? I'm like, they should have like. You remember that you took our gerbil and put it I in should, the microwave? Yeah, I should have had to go to therapy for the thing. Yeah. But then I would have fun with them also, yeah. and then you, I would torture them a little. My mom, when, my mom, my uh, mom. I remember this. This I think damaged me. I think it's the reason that I'm like troubled sexually. Yeah. Um, because when I was like seven, she rented Clockwork Orange. Jesus. And I just sat down next to her and I watched Clockwork Orange, and I remember it so so clearly, like watching the gang rape scene where they they tie the guy down in a wheelchair and then they proceed yeah, to yeah. rape his girlfriend. And I remember at seven being like. Like, I shouldn't know what gang rape is. That's hilarious. Yeah. But, but, and, and, but at seven and a half, you're like, I'm so happy I do. <laughs> hey, Mom, you just took me from zero to 60 sexually. <laughs> Guess who loves weird stuff now? Oh, I know. I'm walking Good in a job, boy, Mom. walking out a full-on poo. <laughs> but if I saw, like, a professional about that, I gar- they, they might pinpoint, like, my sexual deviancies to that moment watching that with my mom. Yeah, I'm not a... Uh, uh, Clockwork Orange. So what's funny is my the guy who would that's been, not the only gang the rape guy scene? the guy who would have been my dad. <laughs> There's multiple gang rape scenes. The guy who wouldn't have been or who would have been my dad if my it was like the guy right before my dad. My mom was dating yeah, before you Kyle reached him. Very Jewish, and he went to go see Clockwork Orange with my mom. He had a fear seizure in the in the in the, in the, in the movie theater. No, shut yeah. up. During that movie, during Clockwork Orange, it's not even that scary of a movie. He just had a fear I seizure. I mean, if you're a young girl, it is. I mean, I love that he comes to and he goes, "Oh, I'm so sorry. What happened? <laughs> what did I do? Oh, did I have a fear? Did seizure? I go weird? Oh my God, did I spill the popcorn? They're not going to give me my money back for that. I, the two <laughs> things I hate most are Cockney accents and gang rapes. <laughs> I can't stand either one of them. I wish that was in the write up. That's a, a yeah. The horror movies just fucked me up too much as a kid. I had to stay away from. I've been telling you, Isabella always has impressed me because me and Carla would take her to see like Paranormal Activity when that came out. And, like Paranormal Activity, when I was like like I used to have a bed and stuff in the basement, and I'd come upstairs like late at night myself. <laughs> but what, imagine, like the the cameras on in Jay's house, and he just stands above the bed. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But what it was like, what was funny was, and Carla would hear it sometimes, like. She probably wondered why, like, hey, how come every time, like, late at night when Jay comes up the steps, it's like a a, a heavy, hard sprint yeah. of fat foot? Because I would go up those stairs, like, and I'd really, as I'm turning the corner to go to the steps, I'm always like, these are just movies, man. These things aren't real. There's no demons in the world. And you just go upstairs and go, put just in case, man. Let me just take out this stuff pretty quick. <laughs> and this whole ass was really the genuine, like, I don't want to look back either. Just close the door and then go peek in on Carla and Isabel sleeping and be like, all right, people exist, things are real, Nothing's, uh, I, I'm not in a parallel universe, and everything's good. I've been saying that on stage a couple times, if, a, if that audience could see how fast I run upstairs, turning off a light my entire life has never changed. Two so, steps so, at a time. It, it doesn't change. I, I want, I want I do, out I quick. do a defensive lineman rip around a corner if there's on a step where <laughs> I drop the shoulder. And, and, my, mo- and my mom uh, used to make me, we used, I grew up in a duplex apartment. Yeah. And the washing machine was in the basement. Oh, that's where they always And so she are. asked me to like, switch over laundry, and it was just, it's just like, it was like a dank, you know, it was, like, it was a basement basement. It wasn't Unfinished? like... A, uh, unfinished is even the wrong word. It was just a concrete basement that had, like, two washing machines, two dryers. You fantasizing about the washing machine talking to you, feed me, Jerry! Yeah, I get Home Alone, <laughs> yeah. the furnace. Yeah. No, it was that's the just... toilet. It was, oh, no, Home Alone was the furnace. Home Alone right. was the furnace, but I, I remember going downstairs, and uh, we had a cat down there that no one really cared about. 
So you just piss on shit? What? Yeah, we had a cat. <laughs> that sounds hot. Like, Pete is going to get involved in that. If you, no. We got no one gave a shit about. just kept in the basement. I got a cat when I was five years old. That was DJ Scat Cat. He came from the streets. Yeah, he's like, Soder's a vicious man. <laughs> he's a vicious, apathetic man. He wouldn't let me sing my song. <laughs> he keep me in the basement. There were, there were ghosts <laughs> down there. But uh, when I was five, I got a cat, and I wanted to sleep with it, like a stuffed animal. And it just, like, fought me the whole night. And I was just, like, <laughs> a dumb, giant-headed child. And I was like, you're like a teddy bear. And it was just like, it's, like digging in. <laughs> Like trying to get out, and I remember the entire night uh, when I was a kid, it just it was in the corner, and it didn't want me coming near it. So my mom kind of took it as like her cat, but no one really cared about Garfield. <laughs> that was his name Garfield. Yeah, he was an orange cat. I'm not that creative. Dude, I had like a horror story the other day. I was having sex, and it was the day I got my surgery on my eyes. Yeah. So as I'm having sex with this girl who shall remain remain nameless, cool. My eyes. But whisper to my daughter. I will. My my eyes started bleeding. What? Like I thought I was. I thought my eyes. Stigmata. Was, yeah. I, uh, you should have started speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> it's your this is freaking me out. <laughs> dude, it was fucking. T- dude, I, I thought I was bl- like uh, just tearing up a little bit because I just had surgery in my eyes. And, and, then, then, and it was such a beautiful yeah. moment you were having. And then, then, I thought I was tearing up because <laughs> this feels so good. Dude, this is sudden, what making uh, love is. <laughs> the tear went like red. And I was like, what? why is it red now? And then I just looked down and blood was pouring out of my eye under her back. <laughs> but you finished. And she's like, and she's like, oh, I had to take a break. That's so funny. You just smear it around like lamb's blood. Chop sheep, chop top, Is he speaking Latin and Batman? Oh, stuff's talks in hell. Yeah. <laughs> now you have the seed of the beast inside of you. <laughs> oh, this is so great. I know. Do you want to go over and just storm race wars right now oh, with yeah. swords? <laughs> just come and start cutting everybody? When we get ghillie suits, we're going to we're gonna marine crawl over yeah, there just, in ghillie suits. Just imagine ghillie suits, both of us in ghillie suits, with this music playing. And then us just laying, and then in the middle of a golf podcast, oh. Ben's talking about orange, so he's all excited. He's then, goosed up. And then just behind him. Two shrubs rising. <laughs> <laughs> take him out. Throat slit. Yeah. And then we take Deb's hand softly, like Miss Elizabeth, and we walk her into the studio and onto Jacob's lap, who gives us an, an approving thumbs up. And he goes, and Jacob's wearing a cowboy hat. And he goes, and he goes, nice and, to meet you, man. And then he puts one on her, and then they like remember the Kiss. end of remember the end of Can't Buy Me Love. Like, they yes. just, like he just starts like dancing on a tractor. Yeah, is that how you like the ending of that to be, Jacob? Absolutely. Good. You love that, Debbie. She was looking good the other night, but they have they've turned her around on us. I couldn't see her. We gotta go real back, uh, real quick to shitty names. Um, Corey in Texas. Is that his shitty name? Yeah. His name's yeah. Corey Texas. Thanks for calling, buddy. <laughs> Click. Yeah. Good luck with that whole thing. <laughs> Bye. Corey, what's uh, your relative? What did they name their daughter? They named her Cricket Trixie Bell. So they want her to be a stripper immediately. Well, toothless or, stripper. Mm-hmm. Or Cricket Trixie Bell could also be like. Uh, no, yeah, strip. I guess that's it. Yeah, that or <laughs> I had another idea for me what it could be. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I mean, a singer of some sort. I but guess. But it looks. Like, it sounds like something an excited hillbilly yells. Well, Crixie and Trixie Bell. <laughs> Crixie and Trixie Bell. I'm oh, happy. Oh, looks like my <laughs> my gravy train is coming. Old Crixie Trixie Bell. Oh, Crixie Trixie Bell. Where's this at? This is in Texas. Yeah, Texas th- has a lot of weird names. I bet. Yeah, thanks for calling in, Corey. Thank you. You got it, brother. Uh, how about Ben in Texas? That's another. That's I love this one, Ben. Hey, how you doing? What's up, buddy? Please give us this one. Okay, so my uh, uh, I have two great uncles, and they were you know they're big in initials down in Texas. So I had one uncle named R M, and the other was J D. And whenever my uncle was born, my grandparents decided, okay, we'll combine their names as an ode to their brothers. Well, let's name them. Uh, J M or R D and R D was almost chosen and it was standing for Rufus Docius. D- the D is Docius. They could have gone a Donald or 
Docious. No, Rufus, Rufus Docious. Rufus Docious. They Docious. changed their minds and went with Johnny Melton. So okay. he has a pretty normal name, but it's almost Rufus Docious. All right. That'd be pretty cool, though, Rufus, Rufus Docious. Rufus is a pretty solid name. Rufus is an awesome name. It's the, uh, no, but you have to get through it. But you know what's funny? If the name's going to be so bizarre, it's got to be straight. You know what I'm saying? Your, your name, like almost like Cricket Trixie Bell. Yeah. Go all is, the way. It's crazy across the board. It's weird to have, like, you know, your name's like Wankerstein. Like, you know, Steve, James. Yeah. yeah. Wankerstein, <laughs> Wankerstein James Johnson. Yeah. I, I mean, we named our son James specifically because we didn't want him. Like, classic names are no, they don't exist anymore. So everyone yeah. has and a middle crazy... name. His middle name's a toughie. I know, but it's an homage. Yes, no, I think Sydney is a good name. Do you like it? I love it. I like Sydney. Sydney, Sydney for Sid. a dude that seems like a tough Sid. Yeah, well, well, Sid does sound cool. When he hates me when he's fourteen, he's gonna tell me to call him Sid. Dude, I remember when we were doing <laughs> I'm that. I'm Sid night? now, Pop. Get out remember? of my room, Dad. I hate you. Do you remember what we were Sid. doing in the car ride, the three of us one time, where we were doing? Uh, James, Jay's daughter's here. Relax. James bullying. <laughs> James bullying Lewis when he grows up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, hey, dad. <laughs> he's like, oh god, he makes me call him Sid, and he's really good at Muay Thai. <laughs> yeah. He might just kick you in the shin. <laughs> Lewis has been clockwork oranging his as we said, as you say in your joke, right? Yeah, yeah clockwork yeah, yeah. oranging him to the MMA. You yeah. just make him watch it. But if your son just actually becomes an amazing mixed martial artist and hates you. And goes by the name Sid. Yeah, I. Uh, Lewis I, had his son singing "Fucking Hostile" on the thing, which is one of the funniest things I've ever seen yeah. in my life. He didn't know what the words meant. Do you have that video? Is that video available anywhere? That's so great. It's, it's one of the cutest, funniest, awesomest things I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. He just screams and he goes for it. Pantera's wow. "Fucking Hostile." <laughs> well, Child Protective Services are probably going to come after me now. Oh, they've already oh. been. They've already been. But we got our dance with it was CPS. <laughs> they had Isabella super abused. Can you tell? Look at her. First of all, if I wish the CPS yeah, she grew got, up watching Saw I wish CPS got called. I wish CPS. <laughs> she laughs at beheadings. I wish CPS well, got called us now because they would see that she could probably fight me fair right now. <laughs> what were you saying, Isabella? One time Sorry, I was Rocky. watching the Saw movies by myself upstairs, and Dad and Dave were downstairs. Yeah, what were we I doing? Got, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so. I got really scared at one part, and I run down the stairs, and I fall down the stairs, and I like get the wind knocked out of me, and they still don't notice that I'm like out of breath. So I slowly crawl to the bed, and Dad just sits up and looks at me and goes, "What's your problem?" That is great. Well, I didn't hear you fall on the stairs. You, you know, don't hear loud clunks falling downstairs. I don't know what's going on half the time. <laughs> you know, that's just the house settling. Thought you were dancing. <laughs> yeah, Dave was like, "Did your daughter just run the stairs?" I go, "Ah, it's probably the dog scurrying around out there." <laughs> <laughs> I would know if she got the wind knocked out of her. That wheezing would alert I, I, me. I'm talking about being like a scared person. If on, on the the few occasions where I was out in Long Island at the house by myself because uh, like Carla and Isabella like, went to visit her dad or something, yeah, there was a dog that I hated. <laughs> hated this dog. Coconut. Coconut. I, I remember coconut. Coconut was never house trained ever. <laughs> never. I had the dog for years. Never was house trained. And then, uh, but I would go on purpose. I'd go, well, I want the dog. I'd lock the dog in the bedroom with me while they're gone. So it would what? have to sleep with me. Oh, that's great. Cause you were scared. Cause I would be just feel better knowing that this oh, little dog was this. there. Yeah. And then I would bring it on the bed with me, even though I know it was going to piss all over me. And it did every yeah. night. It pissed all over me. Did you like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you're into water sports. Jay was like, I've been going through. I've been going through your Google history. Yeah. Jay was like Eddie Murphy's father. Yeah, like, I kicked the dog. I kicked the dog, Eddie. Oh, I did not like that dog. <laughs> the dog. They got the dog while I was away uh, filming Z Rock, and then I can't, in three days of it being there. Every day there was a new thing. I'm like, we have to get rid of this dog. And they go, no, the dog's so adorable, it's trying. And the first day, shit all over the house like three times. The next day, pissed on a pile of my clothes. That's great. Day three, somehow find a way to get behind the entertainment center to chew just the cords of my PlayStation. <laughs> Granted, corn t-shirts do look like they already smell like piss. Yeah. <laughs> In the fairness, yeah. I didn't have corn t-shirts. They didn't fit me. Or I would have had... The amount of shirts I would have from the tours I've been on, every day, every tour I go on, at the end of the tour... They go, hey, it's a tour T-shirt day. They have like all the leftover stock, and you can go pick it. There's just never anything in my size. Yeah. That is great, though. To a to a uh, to Andy, who's that? Is that a new hot chick? Who's that girl? I missed it, <laughs> but it was man. It okay. was man. Uh, yeah, dogs. I've always gotten along with dogs. It was only that cat Garfield. That well, I most people get along with dogs. I did not get along with the. I dogs. don't think you was... did get along with them. No, you hated the dog. The dog hated you. The dog yeah. didn't hate me. The dog well, definitely hated me. Yeah. The coconut. dog was just retarded. No. 
They coconut, never learned. Coconut didn't like you. It didn't learn to like you. No, it it's coconut liked like me fine. Coconut did not like you. Uh, coconut did all these that, shitty things to everybody else Jay, too. Hold on, Jay. You're in a room. You're in a people. You're in a room with people that love you. This is an intervention. The dog loved me. Coconut. I love. Did, oh God. No. Did I eat that dog? Yeah. Did I eat that dog? It pissed all over it. We got some things we really have to work out emotionally here. Why don't we take a break, everyone? Yeah, but before Carla was trying to find uh, Carla. Well, Christine was. Ooh. Uh, Christine was trying to find <laughs> James singing fucking hot style, and she pulled him up singing Frozen, Let It Go instead, which is the opposite. <laughs> That's not as exciting. Uh, you can catch Lewis uh, headlining the Ha Comedy Club in Yonkers, New York, April 15th and 16th. Get tickets at hawridgehill.com. And then Big J going to be at Laugh Boston tomorrow through Saturday, April 7th through April 9th. Get tickets at bigjcomedy.com. And you can hear Lewis on The Countdown on Sirius XM 93 and also on the Real Ass Podcast available at Gas Digital Network. And Legion of Skanks. Well, of course, the LOS and people, let's, know. So people know. Don't. That. Don't show yourself short, I, buddy. I want to. Uh, you're going to be at the comic strip in Edmonton, where I was just at. They are excited for you, buddy. Big, very excited. Edmonton, to Canada, this week, Thursday, April 7th through Saturday, April 9th. Make sure you go over to Hudson's and tell them that uh, me and Fanoichi said hi. I absolutely will. Um, and also, uh, we're going to be doing two live bonfires at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin, Texas, on Friday, April 22nd, Saturday, April 23rd at 4 p.m. Go to austintheater.org. Four badges. We'll be right back, y'all. It's the Buck and Oscar show. <laughs> and now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. It's real ass music all day on the bonfire. Comedy oi, Central oi, Radio, oi, oi, oi. Sirius XM ninety five. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson, and our guest today is the real ass dude himself, the Puerto Rican rattlesnake, Louis J Gomez. <laughs> Oh, you want a damn rattle's nest. There it is. The artist formerly known as the Howard Stern of MMA Radio. Okay. And Joan Jett. Joan Jett of Comedy. Hashtag the show. The ultimate minority. Got so many names like Apollo Creed in this motherfucker. We were talking about terrible names. <laughs> speaking of which. Speaking of which. <laughs> speaking of terrible names. <laughs> um, d uh, I just got tweeted. We should change their name of their show to The Boxcar with Buck and Austin. <laughs> the Boxcar with Buck and Austin. We should do a week of that. Oh, God, I would love to. Can we wear seersucker suits? Yeah, I think we can. Or, or, and you get to wear overalls? Oscar would wear overalls. Yeah. It's like one of those shirts that, that's not a collared shirt, but it still has the three buttons. Yep. Yeah. Cowboy I pajamas. Called, I think it's called a Henley. They're also, but it's also a one piece, like full body. Yes. Yeah. Should we do that? Just, we a couple do a of, just a couple of hayseeds doing comedy. <laughs> just hayseed radio for two days? Absa effing lutely. Put it on the docket. Remember that. We got a uh I got a tweet today. Yeah. Saying that Soder <laughs> yeah. ever working in, in show business, um and willing to accept any project really. Anything. I'm a whore. It was the star of some 1938 Nazi propaganda film. I believe it was 1939, might be 1941. Uh, Steve Blake on Twitter sent it to me, and it was fucking hilarious. Is that the Blakery? Yeah, he's got an LOS badge. Hell yeah, and he found some old Nazi propaganda film. Yeah. By the way, we might we maybe should have thought about it before we told everyone to change their profile pictures to Legion of Skanks logos, because they do some pretty rancid shit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy's got the LOS one. And uh, it's from a 1943 propaganda film, and he says, "Thank the, uh, thank the subreddit on uh, the Open Anthony subreddit on." Yeah, on someone said they found you in this video, which is they're watching a Nazi propaganda film. Yeah, that's awkward. <laughs> and then I, and then I just pop up. Hey, I was some, I was just perusing some Nazi propaganda film. I like to walk around my house in a robe, no undies, just kind of have it on in the background, see what part I chub up to. <laughs> All right, so oh God! I'll do the I'll do the American words. What's being said here? The English. Go, Go ahead, play it. Jews still wearing Look, caftans. Oh. I like bagels, but and now in Western European clothes, prepare to infiltrate Western civilization. Where's me? That ain't me. Is that me? That ain't me. I hope something. What's up with these big-headed weirdos? Uh, maybe that's you. George St. Pierre. God, there oh, no, there he is. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Go back. That's fucking hilarious. It's from a movie called The Eternal Jew. Maybe I'm the Eternal Jew? This whole time I thought I was a Christ figure. Back it up. Man. Turn it out so everybody else can see too, Christine. What? 
Oh, that is Did fucking... they put makeup on them to make them look that evil and Jewy? I don't know, but this is so funny because you don't well, know who I'm going to be. Western European clothes here prepare to infiltrate Western now, civilization. Now, Dan Soder prepared to behead any Jew in his path. No, they're saying I'm an undercover Jew in No, this. he's one of the Jews. Ooh. So, by the way, Lachayim, thank you. Of course, these... He's slightly more handsome than Dan. Well. Yeah. Oh, sir, I thought you were way handsomer Thanks, than dude. that guy. I thought I would play him in a movie. <laughs> you playing that guy in Nazi propaganda remakes? You are the greatest Nazi propaganda actor of his entire generation. You like a good remake. Yeah. I like it. Well, thank you very much, Steve Blake. And everyone, that was, uh, and that was, was awesome. Whoever was watching that movie and found me in it. That was so good. Time travel. You know, <laughs> it's possible, Lewis. We talked, Lewis, Jay sent his father back to change his name <laughs> from Oscar to Jason. Thank God. Come with me if you want to live. Your uh, son, through the next few years, is going to develop some pretty shitty heroes, and he's going to become fans of some pretty awful stuff. No way. That's just kid shit, man. I, can, I control everything he does. Mm. Oh, yeah, cool. So he's going to be a Skid Row fan. You already loves, failed him at that. Loves Phil Anselmo, loves uh, Michael Bisping, and Anderson Silva. Great choices. Yeah. Um, he also... But he's going to eventually develop his... Uh, I'm saying, like, the kiddish stuff that they like. Yeah. Yeah, like can't I can't control. help that she loved Hannah Montana, and now well, I love Hannah Montana. <laughs> she converted you. She converted me. It was went full circle, and now she and now she's not allowed to see Hannah Montana anymore. What was the first thing that she liked that you were like, ah, shit? Well, I, 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 probably that that when I started getting to live action Disney shows. Okay, Dora the Explorer. No, I didn't mind that. Those were like. Those are a, are a blessing, because those are for an age where she those things occupy. Yeah, where they're like, hola. And she's like, Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you don't enjoy like the 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 Muppet stuff or the Sesame Street stuff that James watches necessarily. I kind of do. No, my I'm dad got my dad was a raging alcoholic, but he loved Sesame Street. Don't tell you now, I watched Paw Patrol with James. Pretty solid show. <laughs> Good writing. Oh, you know, I used to love watching with her. I, I loved uh, SpongeBob. I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Love SpongeBob, but then when she went started going to like I said the shows I even talked about it in my special like those like two boys like sneaking out of their house and you know it's like just like it's, it's like all they're all like Saved by the Bell but like shittier. Well, it's like Hannah Montana, like that Disney like uh, just la canned laughter. But by the way, I will say that's where I first saw Ariana Grande was on one of those Disney Dude, shows. Wizards of Waverly. What place. are you like? Are you like a scout? Are you like a college football scout? You're just on Disney Channel, like. Dude, I, I, oh, she so go two years from now. She's gonna be a top prospect. I don't even want to be a creep, but I like saw that girl. I was like, oh, she's way too pretty to be on this show. Uh, there's a couple creep moves that end up happening, and there's just nothing you could do about that. As I said, as Isabella watching those shows through the years of her getting older, you're really going like. My Carly's friend's getting pretty hot. <laughs> She's really filling and, out. She better stop coming around here looking all <laughs> good. My Carly's friend got pretty hot. Uh, Selena Gomez is Wivers, Wizards of Waverly Place. and she's... Dude, look up young Ariana Grande. She plays like a ditz. She's still young, Ariana Grande, she Lewis. She is perfect. She looks 11. Wait, Jay. who is that? That's the girl from iCarly who I liked. That's her boyfriend? Yeah. She Tracy dated, McGrady? Yeah, she's dating an enormous black dude. Holy shit, her dad killed himself. <laughs> yeah. No or he got season tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see... Wait. <clears throat> so you, this is where you scouted her out? She was on Victorious on Nickelodeon. Of course. I know that. Rocky. I feel like I don't know that. Yo, Rock. You Try, why are you trying to upstage me on my own show? I knew that. That's young Ariana Grande? Yeah. That's what she looks like? She, she looked older then. Yeah, she looks she completely pregnant? different now. What? Look at her. Fuck you, Jay. She Lewis, looks, are you? she looks like a child. She, she looks, looks like, like a, a Japanese really hot child. No, she looks like a Japanese fuck robot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she looks like. I saw a channel. Okay. <laughs> I do what you want. <laughs> I mean, I don't give a shit what you say. She is smoking hot. I'll tell you what she is. is um, I found I watched a, a clip from Fallon. I guess the other night, which I watched Dice Clay do his stand up on that. How was, was that? A bummer. It, it wasn't a bummer. as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it I, was heard a bummer, it was, I, I heard thought. it was really bad. So then I was expecting the worst. It was pretty bad, though. It was just so not die. And I love him. You know, I just I, I feel like he, he rushed together a thing for uh, for late night. For late night. Yeah. Um, but uh, they had Ariana Grande and him doing impressions. Yeah. And singing impressions. She's like, talented. Jeff. She. Can, I don't even. She's a, must be an amazing singer because she does good at all these, but. She can do an impression of like 
every other singer. That's what her. Uh, that's basically was the whole episode of SNL. It was like they were setting, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. setting her up to do of that. Of course, which but, is smart. But yeah, if you play something, you know, she does like. Britney Spears, what is it? Britney Spears, Christina. I mean, she doesn't really go out of her wheelhouse very much, but yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's still not like she's doing Merle Haggard. I think we could all do Britney Spears. Oh, baby, oh, baby, 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 me again, and you'll see what happens. Hit me. Did you uh, see me shadow boxing? I'm a genie in a bottle, baby. Uh. Hey, fuck face, hit me one more time. <laughs> I'll break your fucking jaw. You'll see what happens if you fuck with me and die. <laughs> I must confess, I do, but you better believe. <laughs> do believe. If you keep looking at me, I'm gonna lose my mind. Give me a sign. Hit me, faggot, one more time. Uh, I think we just got a hit song. You, I mean, you could put out an album of doing songs in my voice, and it would sell. Oh, dude, Gomez copies. Does Joel was one of my favorite things we ever done on Skanks. We should actually do that. We should put together an album of covers where you just do my voice and sell it for five bucks on the website. Can you, do a, a Christ- can you do a Christmas album? <laughs> Oh, the weather outside is frightful. The sto- you know a story I never do justice to ever is when I try to say the most depressing I've ever felt in my life was leaving, uh, it was before we lived there, it was Carla's mom's house, and, and, you know, very uh, Colombian-centric Christmas Eve, they have like everyone Hispanic that lives in a fucking 50 mile radius over an actual live priest shows up Hey guys, I'm here to do right? some blessings. Am I right Carla? A live priest shows up and then they all sat there and I had to drop something off and I walked out of the house slowly while these sad old immigrant Colombian people were singing Silent Night in Spanish. <laughs> That's hilarious. Can you find my, Silent Night in my Spanish? My grandma used to take me to these things where you would have to act out what happened with Jesus. Jeez. Oh. Like, you would have to act Which out. Which take you I'm to like, Brazil when I wasn't <laughs> looking? <laughs> yeah. No. She would like, take me to this, like, random person's house, and you would just, like, be singing out. Like, you, it would be a whole song in Spanish, and, like, someone would be playing Mary and, like, singing, like, going for, to different people's houses, asking if they could have Crucify Jesus there. this Jew. You know what's hilarious about that? When Isabella was little, me and Carla were so excited for the two days a week that uh, it, we'd have babysitting with uh, Carla's mom just so we, we didn't have to, like, morning till night be either working or taking care of a baby that on the weekends her mom be like i'm taking her to strangers houses to do things and, make, and, and yeah and we're just like I make her carry we're like, a cross we're like from just house to house. <laughs> like just have her ready <laughs> by noon on sins. sunday <laughs> i whip her with lay with she must fast for the entire month of march she must learn the pain <laughs> on saturday we only speak aramaic <laughs> <laughs> the creepiest thing she ever did was when I was about to become get communion. I thought you were gonna say become a woman. I'm like, what? <laughs> she, what she made me do was she, <laughs> she Game of Thrones. Me. She checked my bed every morning. She made me. She got, you have to go to confession, and I didn't want to. And she like is like standing in front of me, and I'm like crying because I don't want to go in there because it looked creepy. And she smacks me and goes, "Go confess your sins." Hey, hey, Lou, hey, Lou, bring it up. We got this. We have story than funny. We have Silent Night in Spanish. Jay's leaving the house too. It sounds like you're trying to conjure a spirit. Oh, but I'm know. telling you, here's the thing. When you got more like my sleepy Mexican impression, what was coming out? I was like, noche noche. Jay? I'm like, this is a song where you're dressed as a Santa Claus and you just step in front of a bus. I wish I had video of my eyes bleeding and I would play this behind it. Yeah, exactly. And then she just turns around slowly. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That is, uh... So you're talking about did you, con- stuff did, you, did you confess your sins? Yes. What were they? She was it was it was so awkward though because he was like you, you you he was like don't be uncomfortable just confess your sins to me. Oh cool, that's bro. so uncomfortable. <laughs> hey, cool, bro. We're nice no. sales pitch. Wait, confess him slower. Yeah, I mean, I definitely. You might have to the... peel off this t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I lied to the priest. I mean, when I had to give communion or yeah, do my confession, I just like lied. I didn't tell him my real sins. Why? Why'd you lie up? It doesn't. He can't tell anybody. You should be like, 
I murdered. murdered. Yeah. I pushed the kid's eyeballs. Well, in I, head. I, I stabbed my dad. Up until I was like in the sixth grade, I wouldn't masturbate on like uh, Christmas or like, yeah. Easter. Like I'd feel like very guilt because I was I I still in the Catholic jer- household. I still don't jerk off at my grandma's house when I go visit her. So really? weird to me. I only jerk off in your grandma's house when, when I visit her. <laughs> you do when you go to my nana's? That's all yeah. he does. Yeah. She's like, Lewis, you came to visit. Come out and spend some Come time with me. Come play some gin rubby. <laughs> what are you doing, you busy boy? I, uh, I want someone's. Oh, it's all right. We were almost out of time here. I was. Curious to get into this here. Um, I want to hear Ariana Grande uh, sing. Oh yeah, play you play that real quick because it just kind of goes into it. The heroes of the kids now. Her her video got banned from the internet for her new song because all she was doing is just doing some weird dancing and like lingerie. Can we just play that instead? (laughs) (laughs) No, this is a skit. You gotta do Fallon. You gotta do the thing on her on Fallon. Yeah, she's she was Christine. Guys, god damn it! You know what, Carla, you're back in. And you're hired on the bonfire. Carla, can you type? <laughs> I, I had a, a, uh, please go for it. A child? She looks like a child, Jay. She looks like a child, Lewis. You're, you're a fucking adult. <laughs> That's Britney Spears. <laughs> And Jimmy Fallon over, over excitedly laughs at it for a half hour. I call him MDMA Fallon. Oh, oh, oh too rails, good. Bumping rails of pure X. Actually, he does a sting that's pretty great. He does he? Yeah. Okay. Aaron Neville. Does he do a good Aaron? Yeah, Neville? of course. Uh, I want to. I love Aaron uh, Neville. Uh, Aaron Neville. Oh, oh yeah. Oh me. Oh okay. Yeah. You know Aaron Neville doing cheerleader. Oh, this is so Omi. set up. And they go, who is that again? Oh. Yeah. oh. That's great. Yeah. My mom used to love Aaron Neville. I don't know how much, but I know how I love you. I said, did a sketch where Horatio Sands played him. Yeah. And when they were doing the build a house, when they were doing Habitat for Humanity, and he's like, oh, this cocoa butter on my arms. <laughs> it's just great. Um,. Yeah, so those are the heroes, Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande, but kids I aren't loving Aaron Neville anymore. That's for sure. Yeah, that's why. So you know, it was a little bit set up there. Right? I don't know all this. Like she, she gets, she gets Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, and Celine Dion. He gets Aaron Neville and Sting. Yeah. Like it's not. Anyway, uh, Jacob brought this to us a while back, and I thought it'd be a fun thing while uh, Isabella was sitting in here, because I know she loves the Smith kids, but these are exactly what you worry about happening. To your children, if you have any kind of money, you really are you really a fan of Willow and Jaden Smith? Well, I don't really like like Jaden. You just like Willow. I don't really like her anymore. I used Why? to like her when I like she came out with a song that I thought was amazing. Whip, amazing. I thought it was amazing. Did you Whip sit with your father and say amazing? <laughs> I've watched you hey, beg me to turn hey. off Beatles songs. Hey, this is shit. You're in a room. You're in a yes, safe space, Rocky. The Beatles songs. You were making fun of me, calling me a Jew. I don't remember that happening at all. <laughs> that seems like you're just. Con- what, are you confessing now? <laughs> you what? Sang the song. It was the day that you told me I was half Jewish, and I kept telling you I was not Jewish. And then you sang to me the song "Hey Jude," but instead of Jude, you said "Hey Jew." That's pretty good. Oh, 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 that's fun. And then. And, you yeah, know, honestly, that's fun. She didn't want to hear it because her grandma had been making her carry that heavy cross every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> she was identifying. Plus, you know, Uncle Uncle Dan's been out there making all that Nazi propaganda. <laughs> yeah, I was in a thing where I was like, Val Viva Not brings this app around the child. I'll tell you what she does know, though. What's your favorite heavy metal song, Scoobs? Push my fingers into my eyes. No. Run to the hills. Yeah. Okay. Iron Maiden. Run Run to the hills. Iron Maiden. Jew. Run to the hills, you Jew. Jew to the word. Or to the song? Um, I was going to read these things because is this is all Twitter stuff, Jacob. Yeah, it's all Twitter. This, I mean, they're so disconnected from the reality of like a seventeen and fifteen year old kid. Didn't she go to school for like a year? Didn't uh, she like say that she well, went she to school for a year that. and she? Got she depressed? mentioned that. It, it says Jaden Smith. Uh, his Twitter bio promises. If you want to see the future of music, photography, and filmmaking. And stand-up comedy. Oh, you know he's going to jump into that at some point. I can't wait for when Jaden tries stand-up comedy. Uh, Willow. And is amazing at it. Willow, Sw- Willow Smith tweets, anything, capital, that I 
ever capital do is geared towards the evolution and vibrational elevation of this planet through the inspiration of individuals. Oh, I my Christ. It. I hate those kids. She Can I wrote, tell you guys this? I get it. She wrote with my hair back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Is this it? Yeah, oh, dude. You feel your vibration elevation? Hey, guys. It's just like Bill Hicks said. We're all a piece of the same matter to slow down to a denser vibration. They're literally saying the same things as Corey Feldman saying in his uh, Ascension Elevation uh, fucking uh, campaign. You ever think we're going to ever see a crossover? Maybe a little Smith children? music video for this song, she has her hair and like a b big braid and a heart on top of her head. And she has like these nails that are like that long. Yeah, well, she's black. I, uh... <laughs> That's how Jay settles arguments in the Okerson household. <laughs> yeah, she's black. We well, she, do that. She's black. Both. Move forward. She, Next know, question. She's not even half Jewish like you. Full black. I'm not Jewish. Um, the first time I said to her, she's half Jewish. Technically, she was, I'm not a Jew. Joking her words. <laughs> All right. Pump the brakes, Rocky. I'm not an abomination, Dad. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm on the right side of history. Chosen for what? Extermination? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's like, oh my Daniel, god, she's like, a speech it a Jew from church. A Jew Gloria church? <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's coming out. That's hilarious. You just openly, you just find out your daughter's genetically anti Semitic. <laughs> she can't help it. She's got the anti Semite gene. Wait, we only have two more minutes left, so I want to read these. These, are, these get ridiculous. Dude. Yeah. Jaden Smith has said, we don't think a lot of music out there is that cool, so we make our own music. We don't have any song that we like to listen to on the PCH by any other artist, you know? They like to make music for themselves to listen to. It's just to. them banging on pots like Stomp. Willow says, there's no novels that I like to read, so I write my own novels. Then I read them again, and it's the best thing. Can we can we all write our own novels and check back in? And yes. Do you guys want to write novels? Dude, we should each write a chapter of one long novel. Done. Like, you know, I used to like that. I used to continue the other person's story. Yeah. Yes. Let's do that. 100%. Let's do that all through Skanks. We're not going to do that at all. We're yeah, we will. To it. We, never can, we can snake it. Me and Soto, me and Soto two weeks ago, we're going to meet up in North Carolina. Yeah, Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were only an hour and a half away from each other. In school. What? He said, you never learn anything in school. Think about how many car accidents happen every day. Driver's Ed, what's up? I still haven't been to Driver's Ed because if every... Buddy, I know has been in an accident. I can't see how Driver's Ed is really helping them out. Have you? Been, how long have you been reading? Yeah, I'm I'm just like, like, <laughs> I don't like how she's like mocking me that I can't read that well. <laughs> she goes, "Hey, by the way, I she's heard you guys' live reads. She's uh, natural on air talent." Yeah, she's like, "Hey, sleep number, why don't you call Maybe me?" Maybe Louis, you can talent. help. You can help Isabella reach her, realize her dreams of making a. She wants to make a web show called Cupcakes with Comedians. No, no, no. It's Comedians not a web show. It is a TV show. Oh, well, now you're out. Now you're out of your goddamn <laughs> yeah, mind. You already... She just doses us oh, with God. mushrooms. <laughs> she goes, what are you seeing? You? What are you seeing now? Are you guys having fun? <laughs> you're probably what, seeing the truth. Now? Uh, we have a two, more, two more of these. Willow says, I went to school for one year. It was the best experience, but the worst experience. The best experience because I was like, oh, now I know why kids are so depressed. <laughs> but it was the worst experience because I was depressed. <laughs> That's actually pretty prolific. What a hand job. <laughs> Smacks her. And uh, Will Smith has proudly claimed responsibility for being the Dr. Frankenstein who created these terrifying ego monsters. He said in a recent BBC interview that Jaden has a really powerful internal quality as an artist that as parents we encourage. Jaden is 100% fearless. He will do anything. And then he Even said, oh, Willow, remake the karate kid. Willow's a dirty little whore. I want her out of my house. Goes, yeah. Willow, just a succubus. She just takes time and money, baby. Just a total, total slob. Is it as fun? Uh, could we expect the same level of fun on the countdown, Lewis, on X Series XM93? Rush? A lot of fun on the countdown, guys. Every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check it out. Me and Michael Bisping, who just beat Anderson Silva a few yeah. weeks ago. And I can't say the movie, but he got booked in uh, the next three movies of a very, very big action franchise. Roadhouse. One, two, and three. So I might be losing my show. Uh, uh, no, you can carry the thing by yourself, buddy. That's all they need is the real ass dude. Uh, also, real ass podcast available on Gas Digital Network, which also I have SDR show on there. Dave Smith is part of the problem. High Society Radio, which we also do Legion of Skanks on Kumi Network. Um, Lewis, you can see headlining Ha Comedy Club in Yonkers, New York, April 15th and 16th. Get tickets at Ha Ridge Hill. It's H A R I D G E H I L L. Ha Ridge Hill. Dot com and uh, do we're gonna we want to mention the thirteenth? Yeah, the thirteenth. Fucking a, we do. Yeah, on Friday, May thirteenth, the Legion of Skanks presents 
Louis J. Gomez and Dave Smith, special guest Dan Soder at the Hustler Club in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. D Town. Yeah, for all those people, uh, we're I'm not doing comedy, we're stripping. Yeah, I'm going to dance. I'm going to be slapping my butt on the ground in Nickelback. <laughs> for all those people who asked about coming to Detroit, we're finally doing it. Hells yeah. Dan One Soder night. also will be at the comic strip in Edmonton, Canada this week, Thursday, April 7th through Saturday, April 9th. Get tickets at dansoder.com and check out used people. On ComedyCentral.com, three webisodes. And now, again, I'll say it to people who here the other day, officially in a script deal with Comedy Central. Thank you, sir. Jay's clapping, everyone. And then when, uh, you can also watch them on YouTube, but then go over to CISO.com to watch What's Your Fucking Deal, Big Jay's Crowd Work Show, Louis J. Gomez, and myself, both appearing in episodes. So go get a pass. And then there's, there's a new episode every Wednesday at midnight, technically Thursday. And then check out Jay at Laugh Boston. This weekend, tomorrow through Saturday, get tickets to the show at BigJComedy.com. Uh, we love all of you campers. We love our crew. Thank you to Carla and Rocky for coming in today. Carla and Rocco! Rocco! We will see you guys Monday for another new and live bonfire from Buck and Oscar. Have a safe weekend, and don't forget to buy a Nissan. Crackle, crackle.